Okay, if this was easy, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be worth doing. But... Uh, again, I didn't quit because I was afraid of Germany. I quit because I automatically joined the Allies when they declared on me. I could have won in the end, but uh, I would definitely win. It's just I would, it wouldn't be a world conquest. I don't think I did anything wrong when it comes to the threat management. It just has. Given my current situation, I have to align towards these dudes as fast as I can in order to increase threat on these dudes and reduce my neutrality to zero. <clears throat> Aligning towards Germany would be a mistake because when Germany declares war, I won't lose a 20 neutrality all of a sudden because Germany declared war. No, I'm on their side, so Germany declaring war, it's fine. So then I keep 20 neutrality. Enjoy a few more years of trying to reduce the neutrality. So it's there's nothing I can do about Germany. Germany will feel threatened every time I declare war. I just have to stay clear of them. Maybe they won't declare on me. Or I have to declare on them. I have the border with them, so they declare war on me. That's a behavior that I usually only see, only see, like I said, with Japan and and the US. What I did wrong was to think that I was going to go to war in 1941, when in fact I was ready to go to war by 1940. Well, with that in mind, I need to do my research better. It sucks to go back like five hours in time <laughs> when things are becoming really fun. Old. That's all there is to it. Could have land leads like from the US, land leads from the United Kingdom, it would be just awesome in terms of IC. But in terms of world conquest, it would suck. This time I'm selling just 10. They said yes, good, good, good. So two I see, yeah, this is um good stuff, Liberian, good stuff, good, good stuff. Please nerf paradox, Liberia is OP. Right, I forgot to ditch these dudes. I'm just a slight tired. Slightly tired.
I've been talking <laughs> and thinking what to do. And believe it or not, for streaming, that's really tiring. This is a complex game and actually coming up with a commentary that's actually worth worth listening to when it comes to explaining things and at the same time thinking about strategy with so many variables it's tiring business so uh, i'm gonna go with bikes now i need to start aligning to these guys uh, actually I need the landing cracks first. Where am I being pulled? To the Allies. Okay. Given the speed of, of uh, neutrality reduction when, when in ideal situ situation, in a, an ideal situation, it's, I want bother much with raising threat on friends past a few spies that is Can't align just yet. I need my landing crafts. I need like 50 bucks or so. So that's gonna take a while. So let's get on with it. And I have like 15 spies, I'm gonna send it to the to France. In France, early on, the spies last a long, long, long time, so it's worth it. When I start losing spies like there's no tomorrow, then it's no longer worth it. Okay, uh, let's try buy stuff now. Buy stuff. And start the alignment. So buy production license. I'm actually just going to do it this way. No. I might still not get it, so I'm going to wait another day. The hell, oh, idiot. I didn't select the stupid landing craft. It's a yes. Dicks. Okay, let's be generous and give it like 20 spies and then forget about it. It's not a big deal. It's one year and a half, uh, one month and a half of spies. Okay, there we go. Now we send it to France. Increase threat. And that's about it for spies until I'm properly aligned. I'm gonna need more of these shortly. Okay. 
54 bucks since I have more money I'm gonna try to buy more of them okay this time they accepted it good so we're progressing so with this in mind I'm gonna straight away align towards the Soviets I've got my landing crafts And time to start researching. So, um, large front, tactical command structure. I'm not sure industrial efficiency is worth it now, given that I'll be able to go to war by 1940. And I need top-notch militia. For 1941, absolutely. This is gonna wait. Now I need to stop sucking up to the Soviets. But I only have two transports. But I need to start making divisions soon. I wonder, can I? Uh, but I've got Sweden. Never mind, I've got Sweden. I could buy just um, stuff from these guys or from Sweden. The militia should be pretty much the same. But it's a way, 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 way more clicking if I come here and buy militia. This is level 3 militia, my is level 1 or something. So, in gameplay terms, it would be the be best thing I could be doing is to buy militia from these dudes right now and build it. But it's a, a god awful high amount of clicking. So, I'm just gonna bypass that and just make my shitty militia and upgrade it later on. So I think that's it. Now align towards these dudes. I mean, suck up to them. Which means I have to align fast. Faster, I have to ruin my relationship with the United Kingdom. I can't do it yet because of neutrality. So now it's just go, keep an eye on the laws, I need these, so... Speed 5 while I wait for basic, for improvements on the, for the economic, for the economy. That's about it.
I'm gonna mute the microphone for a minute because I'm eating some stuff. You don't wanna hear me chewing. Which nation would be hardest doable world conquest without manpower or exploit? I mean, I don't know, Albania, Luxembourg, but that's still doable. Now, Albania is pretty weak. It's just like this, it's just like Liberia, but on a better continent. And it's threatened by Italy early on. But I already did it with these dudes. Then there's, there are nations that you simply can't do it if you don't exploit. I suppose Liberia falls in that category along with Cuba. And uh, not in near Ethiopia, no. There's there's uh, just Ethiopia. These ones are vassals. If you want a less hardcore country to play as, no. I'm, Ireland is also probably a, a tad on the challenging side, but can still do it. I mean, no one threatens Ireland, so and then, but it's it's not a powerhouse. So the absolute one, I would say, is this one. Right, how's my neutrality? I'm going slowly because I'm I'm replying to questions. I can't. This is a very sensible um, stage of the run, where the laws are still going to change. How about Butan? Butan can't be. Butan is a is a vassal. In Hearts of Iron 3, vassals cannot break free. I tried Tibet, but I was not fast enough, and Tibet needs to exploit.
see I've been a bunch of days with spice and friends increasing threat and no one died yet oh shit they're not increasing threat but it's normal behavior it takes forever and one day to I pressed Germany by mistake It's not a big deal. No, nothing was lost. Like it's just one zero point zero one every three days. That's pathetic. By comparison with what we can get with proper alignment and bordering a major. But sometimes that's all we have. So Right, that was the neutrality. Sixty six. When it reaches to 65, I can finally start pissing off these dudes and I can th and therefore finally align towards the cometer. In the meantime, I'm getting convoys. These, these are needed for my alignment. That's why I probably should even be doing this manually. I will speed up in a moment. Yeah, Buten is a, is a British vessel. See them over here? It's a puppet. There we go. Let's um, because right now I'm still aligning towards the allies, even though you know the, the power of the allies is very big to push me towards them. I'm still drifting towards them with the embargoes. And sucking up to the Soviets, that's going to change, but I can only start, well, I could be sucking up a bit only, maybe, please say yes, thanks, I suppose this was a mistake, I should have done this earlier, because I, I did have two, two convoys, I mean, it was a mistake to not do that sooner, because I did have two convoys. Oh, right. No, but it's a sign, so what gives? I don't have convoys, that's why. Please say yes, only a dig. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Have to be careful with these. <clears throat> I run out of that, I run out of money. So going back, we can already probably see, no, not yet. See the spies, barely lost spies.
Don't pull mobilization. Production is still going. I'm gonna put this on manual again. It's important that I get those transports. I mean, convoys. It should do it. Until the next change, loss change. Until the loss change again. Embargo. Finally moving towards the commuter, finally. I only have four IC, so if if war economy pops over there, I need to enable it like right away. It's a huge difference. Now prioritize production. There you go. Militia small arms. Suppose prioritize. I want tip top militia with tip top. You know, um, doctrines when the war starts. So uh, that's the maximum that I can get in peacetime, so I don't have to worry with that as much. I'll go fully speed 5. Once I'm done with those two transports, I can start producing troops. Actually, Just uh, put that on hold. Why? Because... Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> no, because... the I just got an improvement in small arms, so... And I suppose I like clicking. Hey, what happened? Spanish Civil War. Once these spies die, I won't care. I just do it. I'm gonna go to war just a tad later than I otherwise would, but I can have better technology when it's time to go to war. Instead of being caught with my pants down. Like the way that I was. For other countries, I, I'm, I'm going to say it again. For other countries, it's doing these, it's all that you can do. But for Liberia, because Liberia borders the UK with proper alignment, the the written the threat the neutrality reduction will go like over twenty times faster than doing these. 
so over 20 times faster it's just it's just makes this be pathetic this effort and not worth the leadership in my mind at least September 13th time to start sucking up to the Soviets again all to get that fast alignment I'm actually not getting something that I usually always get, which is production efficiency. I hope I don't regret it. But I'm really worried to spend leadership on that when I need so many other things. I, I feel, usually it's 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 a, it's a go. It's it's worth it. That's why I always do it. But right now, probably it isn't. Right, so sucking up to these guys. Offer trade agreement. This dude is at minus 200. This dude is at minus 199. So I'm gonna actually just, 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 I'm just gonna do it again. In the previous run, I actually had to do it again. So to prevent the dudes from... from um, influencing me, which was slowing down the alignment towards the, the, Axi the, the Soviets. Might as well do it. Why is that that... Does this go, go down over time? I suppose it might. Majors... This was at minus 200, now it's at minus 199. So I'm gonna wait. Really? I never seen that before. I didn't know there was like overtime, the relationship would get better. I don't think it does. I guess I'm gonna find out. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Um, this guy first, I suppose. Very likely, and, she, and they said no. Cool. 
Okay, minus 200 now. So... Let's keep going. What's my relationship with these dudes now? 120. I'm doing this again to try to align as fast as I can towards the Comintern. Before I started doing this, I was being pulled towards the Allies. As you can see now, I'm now drifting towards the Comintern. I also switched the guy over here that was speeding up the alignment towards the Allies due to internal things. So we are a democracy, therefore we align faster towards democratic countries. So I switched to a dude that helps align towards the axis instead. Not because I want to align towards the axis, but because I want to get rid of the allies that were pulling me really hard. Continue to suck up to the Soviets. These very small trades, no, just every time I trade, I get a 15 bonus. Yeah, as this goes up over time, very, very, very slowly. I didn't know that. It's fairly noticeable. That's fine. It's like, it's so slow that it's, I can ignore it completely. I never noticed it and I played this game for thousands of hours. So if I don't notice something, it's because it's, it's worthless usually. So at this speed, it's going to take beyond the scope of the entire freaking game before that makes any difference. Uh, right. Why? I'm not out of cowboys? No, so what gives? Wait one day or one hour. Still, I, I have to wait one day. There we go. 165. Now I'm fully using militia with everything but with the um, available IC. Go. One hundred and eighty relations. But I still need the most it's it's energy, so I'm gonna keep going. I am deploying these because I'm gonna exploit for manpower, otherwise I wouldn't deploy. The reason why I, de I deploy them is because they're gonna need upgrades. And because I'm gonna save on the supplies. If I keep them over here, it, I think they still consume supplies. They don't suffer attrition, but they, they consume supplies. So this gives me the opportunity to lose men. Like I said before, if we lose dudes, this requires less supplies. 
since, since the amount of manpower that I've got it's pretty much irrelevant because I'm going to exploit for manpower so it's a win-win situation there I upgrade and I spend less and I spend less supplies I, I think they I used to think that they didn't consume supplies but when they are not deployed but I think they do don't take that to the bank it's just something that like it's a long story so usually what I'm doing is a bad idea but I'm no longer playing with, with bigger countries I'm playing with very small ones that I have to sit on my ass for a long, long time, like this one and Cuba, which allows me to notice other things that I didn't notice before. Because usually I go to war by, I don't know, most countries that I play it as by 37, I'm at war. Who cares if, with the supplies? If they're, I, I want to deploy them instantly. So you see my point. Anyway, moving on. One thing's for sure, they don't suffer attrition when they're on the pool to be deployed. But I think, again, they, they do consume supplies. At least they consume fuel, but that's guaranteed. They will fuck up your fuel. If you're, if it's a fuel, if it's something that consumes, consumes fuel, you have to deploy it straight away or else it's going to consume fuel as if it was walking even though it's on your pool i've seen it so if they consume fuel they should consume supplies soon that's my guess but i could be wrong so we just uh, take that with a with a pinch of salt because i'm not sure but it should be like i'm saying Anyway, keeping up, sucking up to these dudes. One more deal. I'm going to need a couple of, or three. Let's make four metal. There we go. Actually put these at full efficiency because I need them and that's it now I have to add 200 relations the allies at minus 200 or so and then we're going as fast as we can towards the Soviets hello Johnny Pennies Like, in, in Hearts of Iron 3, if a unit consumes fuel, and it's idle, it doesn't consume any fuel, it just consumes supplies. But if it's in the pool, the supply is, the fuel is drawn from your supply as if it was moving. So you want to deploy it. At least I've seen it, so... It should be like I say. Time to guarantee Danshi. I mean, guarantee. So education is going to hold, be on hold. Tactical command structure is going to be prioritized. This has to be on hold too. It's not as important as the other ones, even though it's really important. The other ones are more important. Because they affect performance really, really hard. 
Well, that one just makes me wait a bit more. But that's about it. There's nothing else I can be doing. Die is cast. What I could do is um, actually increase the efficiency of some of these convoys. Since I've got the, the convoys. Probably should be making more, just one more. Should be researching this suit, that's a whopping 10% combat efficiency. What is your impression about Hearts of Iron 4? After so long time, you didn't touch it. So you didn't have no step back, and this DLC is really improving much. I mean, I try not to talk about it because I'm gonna run. Hearts of Iron 4 was and is a big disappointment to me. The game is fundamentally broken, and they won't fix it. So in short, that's what I think. The long answer would keep me here talking for hours on end, explaining why it's broken, and it will drive viewers away. But I could give you one example. Hearts of Iron 3 as a true supply system. I mean, there's many <laughs> examples that I could give, but I'd say the supply system. Hearts of Iron 3 as a true supply system. Although it's not perfect, it has some bugs, it is an actual supply system that's working. That just needed some, some a bit more of polishing and it would be awesome. It's already awesome, but it would be perfect. In Heart of Iron 4, they delivered the supply, a so-called supply system at release, where the units were living off the land completely living off the land and then they got pressured by people to come up with an actual supply system and they reworked it in a way that the units are still living off the land so it's just the same shit you know with a different package they're still living off the land they still didn't manage to put supplies into the game just they just made it more annoying technically all the units are still living off the land so instead of taking the time to do it right which would mean just like fuel we would have supplies and the supplies would actually be produced and delivered properly just like in hearts of iron 3 they came up with with a bunch of things that are nothing but just, they're just in one word they're just in two words stupid and annoying to use and we still don't have any supplies the units are still living off the land but I could go on and on. And like I said, what happens is that I would just be tiring myself <laughs> of saying the same thing over and over again. And the viewers would leave. Oh, this is this rant there. Oh, such a bad vibe. Oh, I'm gonna go away. Which I couldn't care less, but I do care with, with being tired of saying the same thing. Actually, if I had no viewers, I would be silent. It would be less, even less. But then, but then, why would I be streaming if I had no viewers? 
<laughs> so yeah, whatever. I'm really surprised on how so little thought is given to whatever they do in, in their games these days. After doing a game like this one, but like this one, and, and I suppose Victoria 2 too, mm -hmm. according to, to the feedback from players that have played Victoria 2, which I don't, I never played it because, um, I don't know, I just never, I don't, I, I don't know, the map kind of puts me off. Don't know why I start playing and I don't feel like playing it. But I've heard really nice things about Victoria 2 from players that played it. And I hear their feedback about the newer Victoria game, which is pretty much what I felt when Hearts of Iron 4 was released. See, I'm, I, I, here I am talking and talking and talking about shit instead of talking about what I should be talking about, which is this one and Hearts of Iron 3 that I'm trying to enjoy. So moving on. Yeah, exactly. Uh huh. Okay, here we go. Now that comes that. That. Oh boy. Yeah, it's so much better. You know, you're 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 um, the UK, and you have like five or six or seven or eight or nine or ten seasons all the way to the Falklands. And you actually have to have naval supremacy over every single fucking season to actually be able to naval invade the Falklands. But if you're like Germany or something and you wanna go help your stupid ally in Ethiopia, oh, just, oh, let's just embark. Oh, no need for superiority, just embark on the channel and just go die on the Mediterranean Sea. Or I saw on the channel, I mean, on the over there to the British ships while your stupid AI is trying to get to Ethiopia. So just... <laughs> one, 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 another one. All right. Back in the day, in the there was the League of Nations. The League of Nations failed. So if you're talking about history, on and a game. The League of Nails, League, League of Nations failed because no one gave a, gave a flying fuck to do something about Italy invading Ethiopia, Italy invading Albania, uh, France taking over the Czechs, taking over Austria. They, no, no one gave a fuck. So the League of Nations was a complete collapse. You know, Japan invading China. No one intervened. No one did nothing. So. Because Tiberia, Liberia decides to, uh, they should give a shit. It's the 21st century, after all. See, and it's it's a, besides that, it's a straw man. What you're saying, it's a complete straw man, also. <laughs> it's, but I'm humoring you. See, the never, ever, never, come, and, and nothing comes good out of these. Good, never. It's just. I'm an idiot. I keep talking about it. There's a reason why I don't play Hearts of Iron 4 since 2000. I didn't play it since 2016. I played it like a couple of weeks ago because a, a very big supporter of my channel asked me to. And I couldn't say no to that. He deserved that much and more. But it's not because it was only because he wants me to play it. And tomorrow I'm going to play it again. On my own, I would never touch that game again in my life because it's fundamentally broken. So that's my opinion on Hearts of Iron 4. But to each his own. You enjoy it, the other guy enjoys it. Awesome, fantastic. Keep enjoying it. Personally, this is to me, this is the better game. So let me enjoy it.
So where were we? Talking, coming back to these. Okay, this is no no use. Now let's remove it. Production. We're producing troops as fast as we can. I'm still gonna prioritize production. Because as I produce stuff, these will go up, and therefore, when it's time to upgrade, the upgrades will be done faster with less I see. Uh, so now I'm just waiting for Japan to declare war on Shanxi. For my IC to go up to a measly 7 IC, if I recall correctly. So everything's going as it should at this point. I'm gonna keep an eye on these. Okay, I'm waiting for also for the natural unit to go up so that I can enable to go the best ones. I honestly would enjoy Heart of Iron 3 to an extent probably if I could swap the NATO symbols. Yeah, but but you wouldn't want it if you get used to the NATO, NATO symbols you wouldn't want anything else and this is not that hard this is not that hard to memorize and why would you not want anything else no it's not it's very easy it's just you look at them and they look alien to you but this is incredibly easy man it is and the, 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 this is incredibly easy to decode, like really, really easy. If you bear with me, I can explain it in five minutes and you see that it's, it's really easy. No need, it's, it's not as complicated as it looks like. Now I'm using militia, but militia is self-explanatory. There's an M there. So militia, M. So if you see the square, this this uh, not square this rectangle a rectangle with two when across means it's some kind of infantry it's some kind of infantry the m gave it gives it away it's militia so if you have the square the square the, the the cross on the rectangle it's also always always some kind of infantry and then you have something that gives it away. If it's dudes on foot or dudes on trucks or mechanized, but you always have the cross. It's some sort of infantry. You already know. And then the tanks is also a rectangle with another rectangle over there. And then if it's an heavy tank, you're going to have a, a, a thick bar on one side to tell that's heaven with its heavy weaponry and it's and it's consistent across the board because then you have another type of art it's artillery you know another one like this but with a hole and you know, a circle in the center that's artillery and then if it's light artillery is this you know that's what you're going to see if it's heavy you're going to see a thick bar to the left and there are more, almost all of units to show it to show to you the the marines will have an anchor it's also as the square, the, the cross, and then an anchor showing that's Marines. If it's paratroopers, it's going to have some wings, but also they should have the cross, just like saying it's infantry. And then what am I left with? There, there's nothing more. And there's the tanks that are explained. It's just a rectangle with a rectangle inside again. You have then armored cars, but armored cars are usually met, are usually within the infantry brigade the division, and you won't be able to distinguish them until you zoom in and see what the it's because it's just like it's like light stuff. And there's 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 nothing to it more. Like there's probably a variation of two. Like you have self-propelled artillery, but you're still gonna have the dot in the center telling you that's artillery. But then you're gonna see some wheels or something on the. It's so easy to interpret. And why is this superior to having to having some dudes running around? It's because you look at some dudes and, oh, it's a tank. But what kind of tank is that? There's a huge difference in, in, in armor and firepower between a, an heavy tank and a light tank. 
then you look at the at the thing and let's you memorize the 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 sprites or the or the three D models depending on the game, you're gonna have a hard time knowing if that's an heavy tank or the light tank or a medium tank. With 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 um with 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 the NATO counters you'll know instantly what is the, the division composition. I don't know, I'm just telling things from memory. It's just uh, I can't come here and, and just, I, mean, this is, I could load Germany and show it, but it's extremely simple. There's like three types of units, infantry, armored and artillery and anti-tanks, which is uh, uh, anti-tank is, uh, I mean, it's then we have the anti-tanks too, like tank destroyers and anti-tanks. That's a slightly different thing, but it's just four kinds or so. So I'm telling this from memory. And it's really, 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 really fucking easy. If you, these dudes also, like, this game also has sprites. Which is just, if I come here and enable the stupid sprites, uh, use counters. You zoom in, you see the stupid sprites. You can't see shit. No, you just see this is infantry. Is that... Are those dudes marines? Are those dudes regular infantry? Are those dudes uh, mountain troops? What the fuck are they? How many of them? No, what, what's there? You see a dude with a gun. Like this... This gives you instant, instant, uh, you know, instantly what this is. Like, usually there's not a big headquarter like this one over there. But if there is one, then it will hide the troops behind. But usually the headquarters are at the, are at the back, at the, at the rear. So you can, at a glance, see what's there. And this is not me defending stuff because I like it. It's because it's really, really better. It's a fact. I mean, it's it's truly a fact. At a glance, you can see more information from NATO counters than you can see from some toy soldiers. Um, where's the war against? Please tell me I didn't forget to guarantee. I guaranteed him, right? Japan is taking its sweet time. This game is from 2009, so what did you expect? Extremely hardcore graphics? No, really, this game is not about graphics, this game is about content, about strategy. And that's what... It's just... So, mixed industry. It's like, you have a game with an awesome awesome graphics and then this is just shit they're, they're always just look at oh have fun looking at the graphics
I guess to each his own. Personally, I would get bored from just looking at the graphics. If I can let have both, I would have. Um, it's nice to look at nice graphics. It's nice. But I would rather have a good strategy game instead with a with a good UI, which is what like here I am uh, criticizing Hearts of Iron again. <laughs> the fourth one, the fourth one. The UI compared with the one that I use, this one is it's complete horseshit. Hearts of Iron 4 UI is complete horseshit to a degree that to someone that used this UI that I'm using, it's just going to feel you know, annoyed from using it. You try to micromanage an army with, with in um, here I am again being an ass. So, like, you just go there. I'll explain it in a minute. Uh, how's my alignment? Still going slowly towards the coming turn, but I'm very smoothing. Wow, they're taking their sweet time to move. No rush, guys. Now, let's see. If this was Hearts of Iron 4, and these dudes were attached to an army, to a general, what would happen right now when I did this? I would select the entire fucking thing. Like, cluttering the f all my left UI, like, completely filled with shit that I don't care about. I just want these three. But in Hearts of Iron 4, I had half of the screen occupied by units that I don't going to give a flying fuck about. To make it even worse, sometimes some of the dudes are hidden. This looks like an excellent RimWorld mod pack. <laughs> the, uh, just one second, Ruben. And sometimes to add salt to the injury, one of the units he hidden, and I have to scroll down to fucking find it in the big chunk of units that's in the Hearts of Iron 4. It's complete nonsense. And this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. One of the reasons why I hate that game. Hello, Ruben. Thank you so much for the, for the support and the joke. Sorry about me like shouting or something it's just that i really liked hearts of iron 3 and hearts of iron 4 to me was a giant disappointment so and i could go one in one but what that usually does is you can't you just assign yeah it's just it's my fault exactly it's my fault it's my fault that they didn't keep this behavior that's the same behavior the same behavior, and instead they do that shit in Hearts of Iron Force. So I have to find a workaround for the ED you see that they came up with. I, I make a fix, or I can just not play it. I chose to not play it because the grievances are just too many. I could also not assign them to any general. I was actually thinking about that next time I play Hearts of Iron Four because, like I said, of that channel supported that wants me to play it for his amusement i suppose um I'm, i thought about not actually adding them to generals you no know, just not assign the idiots to, i mean the units to generals to so not piss me off every time i select a unit and and to try to give it manual orders if there's not assigned to any general maybe i'll just see the only units that i touched Instead of the whole fucking army. <laughs> Thanks again, Ruben. 
33 months of su supporting the channel that's great thank you so much and I'm, again i'm sorry you came at the you came at the, the time where i was really going ballistic on hearts of iron for you know just teasing me i personally really dislike the game and it, it's broken beyond like you know fubar fucked up beyond any recognition so that's what they did to this game in in the in, a, in any other one but people that enjoy hearts of iron 4 have the right to enjoy it most of them is because they never played this one they never bothered to try to understand this one and and play it because if they had played this one they, and they actually understood it and liked it you know to each his own again I say to each his own then they would hate Hearts of Iron 4 it's like the analogy of the the car analogy that I get, often give because I felt it personally at one time I thought I had a good car oh this car is good then I, I I actually sit my ass on a really good car behind it, you know, and uh, go driving. I was like, "Oh, jeez, that my car is shit. This is a good car." And then probably if I sit my ass again on the car that's better than the one that I drive, then I'll be like, "Oh my god, there I was thinking that was a good car, huh? This is a good car." And the list just goes on. You don't. My point is, if you don't have a means of comparison. You won't know how shit Hearts of Iron really is. Hearts of Iron 4 really is. I, I need to stop doing this. Like... There goes Shanxi. Yeah, that's one thing that did poorly. It's true, but there's way there's workarounds. But no, I'm not saying this game is perfect. I'm not saying this game is perfect. It isn't. But instead of fixing the the broken stuff and stuff that needs improvement, they just completely axe the good stuff. Along with the bad stuff, <laughs> axed it because I think it's because they're starting canvas for Hearts of Iron Four versus the EU Four, so they started the game with the EU Four like a blank. It would be a blank sheet if it wasn't for the fact that the EU Four already existed. So they tried to so they tried to turn EU Four into Hearts of Iron Four. And turning EU4 into Hearts of Iron 4, into Hearts, I mean, turning EU4 as your blank, as your starting canvas for Hearts of Iron 4 obviously has some problems. And they just cut the corners, and here we have Hearts of Iron 4. And they, trying to put that down my throat, another player's throat. It was to say, oh, we don't want the game to play itself. We don't want the game to play itself because, you know, game, why would we want the game to play itself? Why do so? Uh, we also don't want micromanagement. We also don't want micromanagement. We don't want it. So that's why the, 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 the new supply system, because they want us to micromanage shit. It, it's just. The game is is it was done like they don't they don't have uh it's just like someone that's bipolar but in the in the, the design is but it's bipolar but if, if one can understand it at in the light of of um you know i don't give a shit i just want to sell dlcs I just wanted to keep the dudes buying, you know, buy DLCs. Who cares with the rest? Just as long as we put out, put out some stuff. As long as they keep buying, we keep doing it. You know, as little we're gonna put as little thought into it as it can we possibly can, 
in order for the, and to make more profit. So if you think about it this way, everything makes sense. So, because that's what they do. That's probably why the new Victoria 3 is going to fail. I hope it fails, honestly. Because that game is, by comparison, it's just like Hearts of Iron 3 to Hearts of Iron 4. What they did, they fucked up so hard in my... Um, for someone like me that likes Hearts of Iron 3, they fucked it up so hard that it's broken beyond repair. And, and Victoria 3, by comparison, Victoria 2 is broken beyond repair. So the only thing that people that like Hearts of Iron, uh, sorry, yeah, people like, like Hearts of Iron 3 and like Victoria 2, what they want is for the new game to fail. Because if the new game fails, maybe they'll come back to what existed before. They won't, but that's the best thing that can happen. Obviously, Hearts of Iron 4 didn't fail because of what I just told you. A lot of new players that never played Hearts of Iron 3, so they don't have a means to compare, and Hearts of Iron 4 is just good enough that they enjoy it. And some of them really like it a lot. But uh, for the older players... They don't touch it. So, for from the perspective of Victoria players, Victoria 2 players, the best that could happen to them, the ones that enjoyed Victoria 2 and hate Victoria 3, is for that game to fail. And for Paradox to learn something with two failed games in a row. Or two out of three, something like that. You know, the Imperator Rome failed. CK3 didn't fail, but I don't think it was a big success. Maybe I'm wrong. Victoria 3 apparently is going to be like Imperator. And then, you know, I, I just, at this point, I just don't care. But um, if you ask me, do you want it to fail or do you want it to succeed? I would probably tell you that they want it to fail. Maybe they will learn something out of it and they will stop being such a greedy company, such a greedy company, and actually deliver a quality product next time. If it hurts them in the pocket, maybe, just maybe that's going to happen. Yeah, I know. You love, you love Hearts of Iron 4. I know. So... I'm glad you like it. I really am. I wish I liked it too. You know why? Because I had like shit shit ton of followers on um, on YouTube. I get like thirteen thousand followers over 13,000 actually I put out a Hearts of Iron 3 um, episode back then video and now we get you now several thousand views in, in a few days for each one of them uh, so <laughs> Instead, what happened when Hearts of Iron 4 came out, you know, I switched to another game. And instead of having around 200,000 views per month, I dropped to like, I don't know, 30k views per month. Eventually, I dropped YouTube and I continued to play U4 here on Twitch. Because it's just so much work to, you know, to continue doing YouTube when there was next to no responsiveness from the viewers because they didn't enjoy you for. And if I had enjoyed Hearts of Iron 4,
and obviously my viewers would enjoy it too probably you know from 200,000 I could probably grow to 2 million <laughs> instead I went to 20,000 what I'm trying to say is that when like recently happened again with with Rimworld I was already getting a follow, following for Rimworld at least on an opening on a Saturday or on a, on a Sunday, it was easy to get 40 people watching. Sometimes I would, go, I would go all the way to 80 people. It was not common, but sometimes that would happen. Rimworld now sucks balls, apart from vanilla. You know, all the expansions made the game just be pathetic from my point of view. So then I went to play other games, and then I went to zero viewers. <laughs> so I wish I would like it too, but you know, I am who I am. I am the way that I am. So I I like actual content and not... I like, I, like, I, like, I like challenge. I like games to not insult my fucking intelligence. I like developers to not insult my intelligence. And unfortunately for me, the dudes just want the ching ching and when it comes for this just want the ching ching they become lazy they don't put the efforts into into good gameplay and they just you know consistently trash again games yeah dwarf fortress is awesome i i absolutely love the ui man it's so good to have to click one million times to do something that just requires a one click or two if with a proper UI. I absolutely love it. That's another fine example of, of a game that's incredibly overrated and it's just, you know, junk. The, the UI is just junk. The graphics are junk. Which I usually don't care if the UI was not that bad. If the the user interface was not so terrible, I, I would forgive the graphics being so shit. Now, just like I, I forgive um, some of the things that make this game that I'm playing right now not be perfect. But the overall package is good. Because this, this game doesn't make me like it's just it's just awful like the the way dwarf fortress asks me to do things is just really come on okay just let's just focus on if you don't enjoy this game the, you know that just go do it and something else just stop just stop enough humoring you Stop. Um, you want to talk about Hearts of Iron 3, that's fine. Here I am falling for the bait again. It's pointless, no one's going to change their minds. They would if the game failed, but the game obviously didn't fail. So what am I going to research next? I suppose industrial efficiency since I have everything else up to date. This is ahead of time. I suppose that's what I'm going to do.
Hmm, that's too much. Suppose I'm going with these ones, it's just a few days ahead of time. Okay, zero one. I didn't. Yeah, um, I heard. I I saw the complaints from people playing CK two two. I didn't see your message until now. But I suppose it didn't fail like Imperator did. Unlike CK, it, unlike Victoria three is gonna fail. Unless they do it, they, they they do a miracle. That game now needs a miracle to not fail. It has like four thousand daily players. <laughs> I suppose it's not Imperator with four hundred, but still, for a game that just was just out, it's four thousand playing daily when the maximum was seventy thousand. And it's just going down. Unless they make some drastic changes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, these ones are more important now than these ones. But for the time being, I need to be careful with, with, the, with the research. Not sure how many dudes I want. Already have 11. I should have like 20 or something. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 20 divisions, I think. So that's a good thing. Probably should do this manually now. The AI as a once always wants to get to three thousand supplies, and for a country like this, so small, it's so little. I see. That's something bad because it takes forever to get to three thousand. And I want stuff to be built. Yay, anti tank. On the first of January. I will review the tank. I'm probably going to drop industrial efficiency out of there. I'm actually going to clear all of these. Start from a blank slate and go in order of priority. So these ones are really important because of this one. 
I need three levels of large front and three levels of people army to unlock this one. And this one is incredibly, like I said, incredibly, incredibly important. Suppose I'm going to make room for this one. That one. This one is really important too because of radius. But I think it's going to wait. Okay, so that's for now, and the research will go. One like quite well. The alignment is still going really slowly. But I did everything that I could. Two hundred. It's all crap. I'm about to get every industry emphasis. When you change the conscription law, is is this take on reinforcement cost? Yeah. I mean Yeah, it affects everything if I select so this has a massive effect on the cost of, of building units and therefore if it has a massive effect on the cost of building units it has a massive effect on upgrading them what but the reinforcement probably is not affected by that actually what affects reinforcement is industrial efficiency, the practical of what you're trying to upgrade, and I suppose this also affects it, even though it... Wait, the, I'm talking about... Um, not upgrade, reinforcing. Reinforcing... I was thinking about upgrades. Um, no, reinforcing is is um, probably it's affected by these, and that, that should be about it. That should be about it. Upgrading is is affected by what I told you. It's a practical, then, then your efficiency in terms of industry. Practical industrial efficiency, and that's it. Yeah, I see stacks on reinforcing it, yes, but I'm not allowing the industry to, to replenish them. No, I'm not letting them. I'm actually pressing this button to prevent any reinforcements. Is this is in manual under manual control, so they wouldn't reinforce anyway. It's just in case. I am also forbidding reinforcements by pressing this button every time I display a, a division. It doesn't make any sense to to reinforce them now. No problem.
O. At war with nationalist China. It's taking forever to unwind. Well, I did do everything that I could, so... It is what it is. Should still play out like last time, but this time I should be in better shape. There would be any way to prevent this stupid uprising. I would install it again, even. But there's there's a, a way to deal with the uprisings that it's very very easy to deal with. It's still very early in the day. If you stick around, I'll show it. Or you can. It's very easy, like, what what do you have to do? <clears throat> you come up with a theater headquarters, the highest level of headquarters, and you press this button, and you make a special one. You put it wherever you want. Just, just bear with me. You create a theater headquarters, a new one, and you paint the areas that you just conquered. Let's say Portugal. Just conquer Portugal. You go there and paint Portugal. You click this and you drag to paint. You conquer another area, you paint it too. So you go painted, painted, painted. Don't paint everything that you just conquered. And then what you do is you put one brigade of infantry, just one brigade of infantry in each board. Um Let's just make sure that one brigade of infantry will do. Uh, but um, one brigade of militia can actually also do it. It depends on, on the situation. But one brigade of infantry to control Lisboa and Portugal, entirety of Portugal, will do. You put one brigade of infantry over there, assigned to the new headquarter that you just painted. If a rebel pops, the brigade of infantry is going to go kill the rebel. You put another brigade of infantry right there. If rebels pop, automatically the, the, the brigade of infantry will clear that. In these very large territories, just conquered all these three countries. Or just Sweden. This is really bad infrastructure. You're going to need more than one. You need like two brigades of infantry. You paint it also for the anti-rebel headquarter. And the rebels pop, the brigades of infantry automatically go kill the, the rebels. And just keep doing it. You don't need to give an army to the because the rebels are incredibly weak. One brigade will be enough. I'm actually going to do one brigade of militia instead of infantry, but that's because I can't afford it when it comes to officers. But for like nine out of ten rebels that pop, one brigade of militia will suffice. But to be on the safe side. I mean, it's a long story. It depends if it's the next territory or occupied. It's better that you plan to use brigades of infantry. And there you go. The annoyance is all gone. And you don't have to worry with them. The issue is from occupied territory. If the territory is occupied, there's a thing called which is one of the shittiest things they ever implemented in this game, which is underground resistance cells. If the AI managed to make one of those, oh boy. Oh boy. It's rebellion after rebellion after fucking rebellion after fucking rebellion and more rebellions. 
I remember one time I was occupying Egypt and I had to put one brigade of infantry, one brigade of uh, every like one brigade of infantry, then another one over there, then another one over there. Like every other province, I would have one brigade of infantry just to forget about this stupid. They would pop up and they would instantly be killed by the brigades. I actually, at one point, just put one brigade of infantry in every single fucking province. That's so annoying, that is. So that's why I stopped planning when it comes to conquest. I do my utmost, you know, like do the, what I can, all that I can possibly do to never have occupied territory. Because, boy, that's annoying. It happened shortly after their finest hour was released, so it was a long, long time ago. Before I learned how to deal with that. It's what I'm telling you, that's probably what you're talking and referring to, it's underground resistance. But that won't hurt you if you know what you're doing. You just plan to go conquer shit and the next it. You have a plan, let's say. But but for that you need to understand how the game works. The rules of governments in exile. And I can explain it. It's 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 easy. So I've got factions, as you know by now. At every faction, there's at least one major. Usually, as you can see, you've got a couple of them on the axis, a couple of them on the allies, and one on the commentary. If the Soviet gets defeated, the Soviets are annexed. They don't go into exile. But if France gets defeated, France will go into exile because there's a major left on the faction, the, the UK. When the US is over here in this faction, then if this get, one gets defeated, this goes into exile into the faction leader, which is this one. If this one gets defeated, then the US becomes the faction leader and this one goes into exile, into government in exile into the US. What this does is that, unless you're incredibly lucky, you cannot fool any, fully annex France and the UK because there's the US and the, the territory becomes occupied. And a major pain in the ass when it comes to these. So what you do before you engage a faction with multiple with multiple um, major countries is that you plan on killing them like blitzkrieg blitz style. Before I tackle a faction, I have to have the means to quickly kill them before they can actually make the, the fucking thing called underground resistance. If I leave the, the war going, like, like, I'm at war with this guy, and before the war with this guy is over, I go declare war on that guy. And then I've got occupied territory, and before you know it, it's going to be a pain in the ass. So what you do is you attack someone and you finish it before you go tackle someone else. If you go to tackle multiple factions at the same time, good luck with the underground resistance. That's probably what you did. So, whenever... I never bite more than what I could chew, can chew. So what I, let's say, France is already occupied by Germany. So it's Germany's problem, not mine. So. If I have the strength, I go invade the UK before the US joins. So at that time, when France is occupied and the UK is defeated, then they're both fully annexed and no no problems in underground resistance will happen. So the, the type of garrison that I told you would work will work in, under those circumstances. Other times, I want to go conquer the US before the US joins the Allies. So I can't do that in 1941 usually because I risk the US joining the Allies. 
if they join the allies i have to plan to to i have to have the forces to go quickly deal with the uk or else this is going to be a pain in the ass due to to rebellions there's another way to bypass all of that i've just told you or sometimes there is in the case of italy for example we can add territory war goals that you can conquer half of italy and exit it, even if it goes into exile same thing can be said by for france you can add war goals called take north of france and take whatever from france and then just a, a portion of france will be unconquered same thing goes for the uk the uk has a shit ton of territory or war goal, goals like egypt like italy as libya you know there's a bunch of territory or goals Sweden has take Sweden from Sweden, even if it's on a faction, it is it's instantly annexed. I think Norway has the same, take Norway from Norway. And here, there you go, you will conquer Norway. Finland also can't go into exile if you use take Finland from Finland. It's a bit stupid, but it, it exists. And so there's many work around that problem called underground resistance. Yep, like I explained, if you kill all majors, they can't go into exile unless someone in the meantime becomes a major, which is really rare. I, I don't think I ever saw it. So if I go tackle the Axis, but then there's like Japan also has a bunch of war territory war goals. Or no, not really, it's just this soon. I'm just misremembering it for Japan. Sakhalin, I think, is that one. And then the Pacific bases, it's this stuff. But what I've told you so far, it's true. If you do it this way, you will never have problems with that. And if you stick around, you're going to see me doing it. So I've got 18 divisions, 20 divisions. So I need 20 militia brigades. For superior firepower. Then I'm gonna, I, I hope I'm not fucking these up. I'm taking too long to make the landing craft. It's gonna be pathetic if I can't have them. Ready in time. I would be so idiotic. But this is pretty chic. Oh shoot. Oh, okay, I just changed the laws. Yeah, I know. They're stupid. I never liked them. But I, I, I admitted that's one of the things that Hearts of Iron 4 does better. Or at least it did. Now I'm I'm not sure, but that's one of the things that it did better. No rebels. It's just to break stuff if you don't garrison the thingies. Uh, now it's the garrison is even off the map, I think. According to what I was told. So is that not def it's definitely not all bad. But the general thing is it's bad. It's just awful. It's, it's awful. No, not bad. Awful. For me. But I guess I already said it one million times by now. I I absolutely <laughs> uh, hated the the air zones, for example. You've got, um, let's say, it's just to see how pathetic that is. Of course, you're going to say, oh, but that doesn't happen in Hearts of Iron 4 today. 
but it's just an example just try to think um where this happens but since i don't have from memory where this happens i'm just going to give an example let's say this is an air zone okay this is an air zone all of france is an air zone and all of germany is an air zone I've got an airplane on this airbase, uh, wait, on this airbase with, but this dude only has like 200 kilometers range. I want to give something even more stupid as an example. I guess this is pretty stupid. So let's say Germany, because I hate it. Germany, all of Germany and Luxembourg, and these dudes are all an entire air zone. Because that's how it works in Hearts of Iron 4. Air zones are gigantic. And I've got a, a bomber here that's a World War I bomber. And, but I want to bomb Luxembourg. So that World War I bomber has 200 kilometers range. I want to go bomb Luxembourg. It's just next door. See? Next door. I go bomb Luxembourg and I get an efficiency, a massive mission efficiency penalty because the airplane doesn't have the range to reach a place that it definitely doesn't need to reach, which is the extreme of the fucking air zone. And no. Here I am talking about parts of Iron 4 again. Thanks, Doctor. Doctor. In Heart of Iron 3, I don't have that problem. It's just next door. I want to bomb Luxembourg next door. Why do I have a 90% penalty? There's a bunch of stupid things like that, but <laughs> I'm breaking my own rule. So where were we? Boy, this is taking time. I actually need that militia done for yesterday. So let's keep on the supply. It's really hardcore now. I'm really worried that the landing crafts might not be ready in time. That would be so pathetic. I'm, I'm honestly worried. What I wanted to have a meaningful, meaningful force, because I know I, c I can do it. I just said I might end up with just two landing crafts, and that would be awful. Ever oh shit! This is a brigade. Oh well. What I was the division already deployed.
I won't deploy the brigades. I'm waiting for superior firepower to do that. Bum, ba, dum. Okay, so the infantry, the infantry is almost all done. Wait, you mean to tell me that bombing a target 10 kilometers away and bombing a target 1,000 kilometers away are not the same? And not in the hearts of iron for if the if the air zone is too big, you're gonna get a penalty. Yeah, that's that's how it works. And then there, instead of actually having airplanes flying around, you actually have some animations. And from what I was told, they fucked up. The, the game is so full of bugs that there's like planes flying around and and stuff uh, moving around that doesn't even that doesn't even. Uh, correspond to the actual units like so you know the animations wrong animations sometimes uh, you buy a, a, some pack of, of units and then all well, the units that you get it's different units is the base ones or whatever I, I don't recall I just it's just what I was told something like that the, the the things are all bugged but I didn't experience myself so don't take it to the bank the dude could be just wrong you know just like I had a person just, just an example, and I'm not attacking anyone, by the way. Sometimes they're just wrong. Saying to me today that if I spam someone with impossible trade deals, it's going to hurt the relationship. And I actually did it, and it didn't hurt the relationship. So, and then the person, oh, I'm, I'm, I was wrong. So it's, it's normal concept, you know, it happens. So if it's stuff that I'm sure about, I'll say the, the animation thing, I'm not sure about it because I didn't see anything. Okay, we're finally building the landing craft. ready for large formations as soon as this gets researched you're gonna see how this is gonna affect it's gonna really 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 affect this for the better Is there any situation where when you want to build SC as a miner if you are in plant block now? Building IC is not usually profitable unless you're the US. And maybe maybe the Soviets at some time. I know the Soviets well, you want a big units. I don't recall, it's been a long time, but I think the, the only ones that can truly take advantage of the building I see, it's, it's the... I mean, against AI, I'm not talking multiplayer, but it's, it's, it's the US. And it has to be with rules. Can't declare war 
at, at, until X date. Otherwise, you would be an idiot to build IC as the US. Because there's an, an investment and the return on the investment has to be worth it. No, if you invest, it's because you want a return. Investing in IC usually is not good. It's better to just go conquer shit, you know, make an extra military unit and go conquer just the IC that you wanted to build. That's how it works better. Because if, if it's all out war, you know, everyone can go to war whenever the fuck they please, as long as they have the neutrality to do it, then you'd be an idiot to do it as the US, because you'd start with no army, you need to make an army, like, right away. And instead you're making IT. So you're gonna get owned. Because Germany can declare war really, really early. Within, with, with... I mean, not only Germany, anyone can declare war early if they want to. It's just have to know how to do it. Especially Germany can actually go to war really quickly. So much so that my fastest world conquest in with Germany in Hearts of Iron 3 is probably before I can't I, don't, I honestly don't remember. But I think it was I didn't, I didn't even let the the clock the the date reach 1939 i think i managed to conquer everyone before 1939 so if that was allowed in multiplayer the us <laughs> would be fucked no doubt about it There you go, large formations. This one is, that one is white. Current world record for Hearts of Iron for Germany World Conquest is by the end of 36. Um, I can't doubt that or say it's correct because I completely um, in a word I don't play the game for seven years, so I don't I'm completely out of touch with the exploits. For that to be possible, I suppose a bunch of exploits have to be used that I'm totally unaware. No exploits. So I don't know. That seems like you're bullshitting me then. Right? Again, because then it's even more broken than I think it is. You're just pulling my leg. <clears throat> or, you know, it's even worse than that or what I, what I was thinking. Like, because the... I mean, I'm out of touch with the game, so I can't say. The being able to conquer the whole fucking world before the end of 36 seems, you know, broken <laughs> beyond, I guess it's coherent with the stuff that I was saying. I, I still needed, I still needed as Germany, like three years to conquer the world. So 36, 37 and 38. 
if I did, if I micromanage it really hard, I probably would take like six months off of that because I didn't micromanage it. I just let, you know, I just micromanaged it to the point because my goal was to conquer the world before 39. For September 1st of 1939. So I, I have a bad habit to micromanage things to the extent that will let me get to my objective when if I when I could do much better if I was more ambitious with the with the goal. You know what I'm saying? I know that for a fact because I've been I've been I was competing against myself in you for But in EU4, I kept the record for the fastest world conquest things around early 2014, and it was just someone needed until like 2022 to beat me, and I didn't play the game for like four years already. In the meantime, there was one or two dudes that actually managed to improve my record using my strategies but improving on the micro. And then I had to re-strategize again, come up with a different, better strategy to beat that. But I realized that I just did it to the extent that was needed to beat the current record when I could have spent more time thinking of ways to improve it even further. Because I think, I think like that, I think like this. Okay, if I do this and I do that, will that do it? The answer is yes, I go there and just do it instead of spending more time planning and <laughs> completely break it even more. It's because when I was playing these games daily, I could predict the outcome of the, of the stuff that I wanted to do in my head. I didn't even need to play it. This is true because if you go watch the... If you go watch the um, the vods for the, the world conquest in U four in U four, they're all, they're here on Twitch, and I said on day one I will, I'm gonna conquer the world by fifteen twenty five, and if you know how to play Europa Universalis four, and you look at the map and all those nations and the, the how things work if you know the game. You'll be like, how the fuck can this dude predict that he's gonna conquer the world by 1525? It's just not possible to predict. But I predicted it. You go watch the VOD and you're gonna see me. My ob my objective is 1530, but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna conquer the world by 1525. And that's exactly what I did. Why? Because I predicted the outcome in my head before executing it. It was I was, was sure that I would get to my objective no later than 1530, but there was a good chance that I would finish it by 1525, and that's exactly what happened. Um, but I was just one of the world conquests, and I'm not saying this to brag, I'm just saying that when I know stuff, things really well, I can predict the outcome without playing. So that's how much I knew this game that I'm playing right now back then. That's how much I knew you for. The dudes made changes to the game and I knew exactly what that would in that what would happen, how that would affect the game in every single way and i so many times warned them that what they were doing was bad but they didn't give a shit now you want to play you for there's just one way of playing it probably moving on austin we're moving towards the commuter, so it's not good to use the spies yet. They won't work.
practice the fast generate 100% for attention to make guarantees possible and then the fast kill of factions and see their stockpiles to snowball. Yeah, but you still need you still need the troops. I guess it's very easy to to do that in Hearts of Iron 4, and it is. I, I understood that when I was playing Manchuku. I, I made a shit ton of units and disbanded them a multiple a mob. Like if I had done that in Hearts of Iron 3, that would be the end. But no, uh, it's a lot sorry, but I played as Manchuku recently, just my first game after seven years. And I didn't know how the supply system worked. I deployed six divisions, 60, 40 with divisions on my capital, and they were out of supply. I was like, what? On my capital, and they were out of supply. But okay, but I digress. The, I, I proceeded to disband the troops, so I disbanded them. And then I placed him, and I made it again, <laughs> and I disbanded it again, again. And then, like, in Hearts of Iron 3, that would kill me. In Hearts of Iron 4, that was allowed. Because we can make them really, really quickly, by comparison with these. So I guess I, I understand. If I think about that experience, I guess I understand it. Ah, Houston, we have a problem. This will be ready just by only by June of 39. I should actually be doing the upgrades now before this gets too expensive. It's already expensive as F. I just changed my mind. I'm going to deploy these. I should have made these upgrades a long time ago, actually. But no, I'm an idiot. I'm, I'm just talking about stuff that I shouldn't be talking about. Instead of focusing on my run. <laughs> but it's fine. It's... um. These dudes also need to be upgraded. I just don't want to mix them with... Um... Like, I should have pushed, pushed for the upgrades right after I built the last unit. And the last unit was built a lot, quite a wee bit ago. So I lost some practical, which means this is going to cost me more IC. But whatever. What's done is done. No point crying over spilled milk. Uh, the reason why I remembered about it, it's because I need to uh, increase the laws to get officers. Therefore, I need to be done with the upgrades, or else it's going to cost me an arm and a leg. Hey, they're not reinforcing, right? No, it's just upgrading. I mean, this one isn't because, you know, um, only some of them are upgrading. This is where not having industrial efficiency really hurts me. This is 1939. Let's go with this one. One month late. Whoa. 
Why am I researching? Oh my god, you fucking idiot. I, 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 I <laughs> okay. No comments. I was researching this at one point like an idiot. When I wanted it was this one. And now I'm paying more for supplies just to not mix these ones with those ones. You're gonna see the difference when I finally go to war. This is gonna be a giant difference in, in performance if I actually manage to get everything ready by 1940. The, the difference is gonna be giant. Like, you know, you, if you were here when I was invading Portugal, you saw me failing the invasion, and they had to go and circle, I mean, take their ports in order to not allow them to supply troops overseas. If I actually manage to get three landing crafts going with, with these changes, I probably can just own them, like, instantly, instead of resorting to those cheesy tactics. Provided I get the landing crafts, which at this point, I'm not sure I'm going to get him. Stop by system for Hearts of Iron 4 is not that bad. Okay, I'm glad you like it. So don't bait me again, please. I just want to chill. Okay. Um, checks were next or what? Nope. There's a war with really. There you go again. Like really. What are the odds? Like, there's a 1% chance of this happening. No, twice in a row. The, the Germans are at war with the Czechs again. I'm expecting to go to war at that later than, than what I did last time, because I haven't, I've been saving the leadership. Yeah, I restarted the game. I got declared by Germany. And that put me instantly on the Allies. This is supposed to be a, a neutral run, neutral country run. I, I think by default there's just like 10% or 5% chance of, Germ of the Czechs refusing to be annexed. If it's 10%, so seeing this twice in a row is has like 1% chance of happening. Or 5%, it's even more ridiculously low. But it's happening. As you can see. World War II started early. Now I just need my alignment to go to, you know, I just need my alignment to, in order to, to increase threat on the British and, and I'll be golden. This is actually going pretty well. Modesty apart. 
I'm really liking it. The infantry, the begin, the, they're up to date. Wow, Poland got Germany is getting so lucky. There's just a tiny chance that the dudes, the defeated dudes, won't go into exile. So there you go. This one didn't go into exile. Poland didn't go into exile. Fully annexed, which is so beneficial for Germany. It's incredibly beneficial to them. Right, so the reason why I want it's because I wanted to change the politics, the, the policy to service by requirement. To get some manpower, but above all to get officers. I suppose it's still a bit because, um, because the, the recruitment law does not affect ships. The conscription laws do not affect ships, just affect divisions. So there's no reason for me to not take advantage of it. Right now, because I'm not building any units, I mean any divisions, I'm not upgrading anything, it's everything upgraded. I should go back to normal, to, um, to manual control. Get that landing craft done. Man, this is looking really bad when it comes to these. This is the only thing that worries me. But everything else is looking just awesome. Why do you... Because it, it's pointless at this time. It, this just gives me like 2.5% extra IC, 2.5% of 5. It's zero right now. With so much stuff to research that's needed, researching something that will have zero impact. Unlike industrial efficiency that will actually have an impact. Because it's... It, it, um, Things become cheaper to build and they will take less time to build too. Oh, this is awesome. So there you go. If only I could get my landing crafts. So with these out of the way, the firepower just doubled. My firepower just doubled with these. These one tech, the firepower just doubled. The infantry is up to date. I don't care with these at the moment. To be honest, I don't think I, I will care with it. This is 1939. What, what else should I be researching? Maybe these. Even though I'm using militia, this is not as important. Probably should go with agriculture. No, actually. Let's get some officers. Let's 
How's the alignment? I'm gonna go to our just a tad later by comparison with the previous run, but I will be way more efficient, which is gonna save me time. A lot of time. There's just one problem. <laughs> if this doesn't get done in time. You know, I'll be, I'll be screwed. And there's a risk. Because industrial efficiency. There goes France. The game froze. This time they were not as lucky and uh, they didn't actually annex France just like they did to Poland. Sometimes it happens. France just gets out right the next. Or, you know, if I'm the one playing, that is. Because I think they just take. This is like scripted or they take like a war goal that doesn't let them annex France. In order for Vichy to always pop, that's probably why. But when I'm playing, I don't care with Vichy. I just want an Exisud. So I just take as I give as many war goals as possible, territory war goals, to fully annex him. And the last tidbit of them. Sometimes I'm lucky and I fully annex him. Well, you know what? This is important, but look at the officer ratio. So I'm just gonna keep pumping, pumping out more officers. The other attacks can wait. Because 1940 will come along and it's time to research another or another round of of doctrines. And by then I want to be done with the officers. And if I don't do this, I won't be done with them, with the officers. I wonder if this is sufficiently close for me to start reducing the neutrality. That was from another run, another game. The goal is to conquer as much stuff as I can. If I could conquer the world, I would. But that's yet to be seen. Probably I won't be able to. Well, I've got 20 divisions of five 
very against each so that's gonna help get the the ball rolling And radius is just around the clock too, around the corner, I mean. Good timing for the industrial efficiency. Just a, a tiny bit, but good timing nonetheless. First landing craft. We can already go somewhere. Right. Let's put these into a spice. I'm gonna have to send him to the UK. The time is about the time is about to come. I suppose I can already. Nope, that's bad. Nope. If you can naval invade with no chances, anybody guarantee your targets aren't better to win to go straight for landing crafts from the beginning and start conquests up. No, because I'm prevented from declaring war due to the neutrality mechanic. Liberia starts with 100% neutrality. It's really difficult to go to war with Liberia. It takes, it takes some time and a bit of knowledge of the mechanics to actually be able to do it. So I'm in the process of doing it. I'm probably just gonna research this ahead of time. Just this is incredibly important. It's just one month, two months ahead of time. But I'm so uh I have so little leadership and I need the, the, the spies, so I, I just decided against it. Okay, there we go. This is said very likely, so which means, which might mean that the spies in the uk might actually start to work maybe let's see what happens it's probably too soon but i want to test it yep still too soon It's just uh, marginally dropping.
It's difficult to get the timing right. I don't know the numbers. I know for sure that when I'm, I'm allowed to join them, And I'm being pushed towards the allies. What? Oh, fuckers. I'm being pushed towards the allies. Just gonna embargo them again. Really? Last time this worked, it stopped. Stop it, you dick. I think it might have to do with... No, the event is gone. Fantastic. And then this is random stuff that can ruin the game. After hours of planning, these idiots decide to influence influence me because I'm I'm a democracy, and I'm really close to them. This happens. They're still influencing me. So raising threat on them right now has no effect. <sighs> because they're influencing me, I'm not yet aligned, sufficiently aligned. They didn't get the memo that I hate their guts and I wanna... Last time they just stopped. If I declare war on them, they won't, they won't, they will not peace out. Most likely. Yeah, right. So all this time, and these idiots are now influencing me, which prevents me from aligning towards the Soviets and prevents these from actually working. It's just decreasing neutrality by 0 0.01. Oh, there we go. It's working now. Did you stop? No, but I'm sufficiently aligned towards the Soviets somehow. Okay, as far as long as this works, I don't care that you're pulling me, as long as this works, and it's working. I want the FIC to improve these for quite some time. But this can wait. This one can is good to have, but can also wait. This now. This is really important. This is important. And then we're, we're gone, we're good, we're good. Yeah, 
in a few months we will be able to declare war. It's just this is, is worrying me. That's probably why I'm gonna go with industrial efficiency still. May 17th, I'm gonna get my second landing craft. I think I had three last time. Everything was all fucked up, like the doctrines were all over the place. I didn't have these, I didn't have that. I may even be in a position that I'm going to declare war and I don't even have a second landing graph. That would be Larry's. I'm like this says that I'm moving towards the allies with a strength of 29.36 and but I'm still getting closer to the Soviet Union and that's why the spies are working at 0 0.09 per day they're getting murdered really hard right but i need to make making some deals for manpower just completely been forgetting about that By the way, if you have to wait anyway, what is the actual benefit to make more weaker divisions instead of less but better? It's because of the officers. I would not be able to pay for the officers. The, the, the better units require 10 times more officers. And what's funny, it's because if you add two, two divisions, they stop influencing me good. If you add, geez, the spies are dying like flies. If you add two divisions of militia, like with half the weight, combat weight, two of them have the same firepower as one infantry division or so. And um, but require way less officers. Of course, there's there's more to it, and they also require less supplies. But there's more to it than just what I just told you. But Wait a bit more, like...
But it is what it is. The I wouldn't be able to do anything with Liberia if it, I didn't use militia. Like militia, you don't have combined arms, for example, which is pretty pathetic, but um, the combined arms bonus can reach almost 20%, so it's not that pathetic with a good order of battle. But I don't even have generals, so I can't do a proper order of battle to take advantage of the, of the combined arms bonus anyway, and the list just goes on. But, so, but like I said, if I didn't use militia, there's no way I could have. This amount of firepower. Because the officer ratio would be absolutely mind boggling dreadful. And the officer ratio affects you know, the organization, affects the combat delay, and so and um, probably also affects how fast you can regain back morale because that's also affected, I think, by the maximum organization, which is definitely affected by the by them by the officer ratio. But still dropping. <sighs> and the landing craft. Yeah, I'm gonna wait, have to wait for the landing crafts. At least a second one. Yeah, this is pretty bad. Being able to go to war, but I don't have landing crafts, so I just have one. It was a risk. I didn't do the math. I'm, I think I'm also, I was also be able to, to have everything ready sooner than last time. So there's that. This is February and I'm about to go to war. Because I already knew how things were gonna go, I played better. But it's still gonna take some time to reinforce. <laughs> so I'm I'm a bit late. And this is not researching industrial efficiency coming to bite me in the ass. I should have researched industrial efficiency. I regret not having researched industrial efficiency. There we go. Unfortunately, it came back to bite me in the ass. I was hoping I could do without it.
May of seven. Well, if I think I may have gone to war last time in May, so this would, the second will be ready in May. But I'm ready to go to war before May, which was unexpected. X, I refuse it. After all those clicks. And you want me to join your faction and you're refusing shit. Now I won't join. I was totally gonna join you, but now I won't. You made me mad. Can we declare war on mighty Tibet now? We can. Oh, not yet. Almost there, but not yet. Wow, almost broke. So, but I've got a lot of manpower now. Cool. So, um, I reached zero neutrality, or so it seems. Yep, I'm able to declare war on Tibet, so I probably should be solid. Japan, the one in any trouble. Or not. Just be like, shut up and take my money and then send your stuff to train your people and you <laughs> bribe it to say, this is not an exploit. Okay, so then you've got a vivid, you've got, um, you're like, you're very forgiving. Let's put it that way. So I've reached zero neutrality. So I can't, I don't longer give a shit about increasing threat and sending spies over there. So I'm going to just steal some tech if I can with the remaining. Wow, they're, they're making convoys and, and destroyers and escorts and bombers and fighters. Cool. Um, so I could totally go conquer someone actually now if I had these dudes mobilized and if I had landing crafts. But as predicted, it would be quite hilarious that if I didn't have enough landing crafts. And that's what's happening. I think I went to war last time in, in May. I actually managed to go to war sooner but i'm not ready so it is what it is on the other hand it's fine because I mean, it's not fine but i did derp a lot around last time Due to lacking the doctrines, I have almost all the doctrines, with the exception of this one. So 
So now I just want to make a second landing craft, which gives me 120 cargo capacity. It should be enough for like, I don't know, at least four of these. Oh, it's awesome. Six. Good. This is good. So six at two point five each. This this is good. This is exactly what I needed. Let's make an effort. I mean, the more the better, but that's gonna work. Where's my industrial efficiency? May 22nd. And there's no doubt that apart from the landing craft, by May, I'm in a much better situation than I was last time. There's no doubt about that. Even with one less landing craft, but the doctrines, the guns, the army, I've got 20 divisions of five brigades each that I will be able to deploy once I get these. But this is going to be the last one for a long time. Well, I suppose until I conquer Portugal. Right, I'm being an idiot again. Like, really? Haven't you learned anything? <sighs> so, what did I just research? Like, I should be enlightening towards the Allies by now. I researched radius. Let's let's align towards these dudes. Maybe I should even align towards Germany. No, but my business is with the US. That's why I made so many units. Okay, I'm going towards the the allies pretty fast. It's actually a good time to go to, to go to war. It's not. I mean, it's not a terrible time to go to war. Prioritize reinforcement. Allow these to reinforce, but um, choose the ones with the highest amount of people. One, two, three, four, five, six. Prioritize them. Give them some leaders. That's all out of God. Um, okay, no, there's this guy. Why? Because this is going to prioritize those. It's 
It's gonna prioritize these ones. So I'm gonna again go kick Sema sooner. These dudes are not prioritized. Uh, idiot. There we go. So now speed is up. I wish I had assigned the control key to them, but I'm, I will be able to spot them really easily because those are the only ones that will actually grow. They will be the first ones that will grow to full strength quickly. This was just to get the efficiency updated. Control one, control two. Wouldn't this be like? Wouldn't it be hilarious if Portugal just sunk my landing crafts? They do have four destroyers. It would be just, it would be incredibly hilarious. No, I didn't. I just prioritized these ones. See, it just looks that way due to a bug. If I remove this one, this one, this one, oh, and, uh, and this one, there you go. It's just a visual bug. I need a bit of luck here I, with the Portuguese destroyers, to be honest. They have the power to sink these landing crafts. I've got just two of them. Um, as soon as I conquer Portugal, I'll get more IC and I'll get shortly after that, I'll get more troops more um i mean landing crafts um bum, bum, bum. It's a shame i don't have superior firepower yet, yet. it's not gonna be as efficient but I would have five, I would have another six brigades. There we go. So this is fully reinforced. Let's go over there. Pray that we don't get tracked by the Portuguese destroyers. Let's go conquer mighty Portugal. I'm getting a, probably a penalty uh, from stacking, yeah. But I should be able to overpower these dudes. That's what I'm hoping for. Come on, you can do it. It's just a sub. Like, there's a bunch of things going against me. I only have two landing crafts. And the this dude is low level, which reduces, which doesn't reduce the second penalty by by a lot. But as you can see, I'm overpowering the division, which is something pretty different from last time. It's taking forever, but where I'm winning, as you can see.
And this would be going much, much better if I had more landing crafts and or superior firepower. If you're watching this on YouTube, you didn't see the the previous attempt, but there's a VOD on on if this ever ends on YouTube, that is there's a VOD on Twitch that you can check out. So that's first VP taken out. And one of my landing crafts almost almost destroyed. So that's not good. That's the opposite of good. Almost. Imagine instead of a sub I had been attacked by uh, by the destroyers. Like I really need to take out Portugal, but the risk is very big because of the destroyers. Anyone here? I don't know what that is. If I get this land craft destroyed, this is going to be awful. Like, it's just mind boggling awful. Portugal will try to take that back, so that's why I am. Um, but that's why I left a couple of divisions there. Um, um, <laughs> this is so risky. I want to give them the uh, reasons to go there. But at the same time, I'm really scared. I need to stay clear of this coast. So I'm just going to take a detour. And hope for the best. Because it really seems I'm going to lose a landing craft along with divisions. You know what? This is again, I'm, I'm sorry, but this is really scary. Like, I've been trying for another like four hours or so, three hours, and then I lose this landing craft, and now everything goes down the drain. When this is a really good start. So I probably should just go take Lisboa and starve them out. The danger is just too big.
<laughs> yeah, the danger is just too big. It's just too dangerous. This is too dangerous. Even though I can just land in, like, no, do amphibious assaults. I'm just better off dumping the dudes and running. Come on. Don't get there. I wonder who's gonna get there first. They're probably gonna get there first. I just hope they don't. Please don't get there first. Okay, I'm now under attack. But I'm, I'm confident these dudes will win. This was the result of bombing. I hope I'm not wrong. I'm confident they will win. They won. Now um, the issue is um, the issue becomes supplies. I need to take Lisboa like on the double. It's all or nothing. There's no. I was thinking about like just going around and and encircling to get a, a bonus, but oh my. What could possibly go wrong? Let's go there just until midnight to get a repair a repair tick. They didn't repair because I'm an idiot. Should have prioritized it. It looks like, unless some dudes reinforce these, we have it. We have these. Okay, we have Lisboa. Cool. Um, now, let's bring more dudes. Take the Cine crowd. Take the scenic route and try to dump them over there in ports. Uh, whatever, I'm not just gonna redo it. Hey, wait, no. That was stupid. I have to redo it after all. Some of these dudes are not fully reinforced.
Let's hope I don't get intercepted. Just um, military government. I really need to annex Portugal. Why do we have no IC? But I do have some IC. I'm at 9 now. I just adapted the... Um, to get a bit more of IC. This was at minus 95%. Now it's... I used to have 7 IC, now I've got 9. I'm gonna wait until midnight for another repair tick. Might be the difference between losing the ships or not losing them, so... Hoping for the best. Really hoping for the best. Hey, why did you cancel the deal? What? Don't understand. Oh, they were sunk. Never mind. The Portuguese, the Portuguese, the Portuguese sub is sinking a bunch of convoys. There's probably no one over there. But I don't want to risk it. So here I am again, taking the scenic route back to my capital. So this will make sure that these landing crafts will survive if they manage to get back to the capital, that is. And these dudes actually managed to conquer ports because they dumped a dude there right before we were going to take the city. Why am I still on service by requirement? I guess and now I have to. Now I'm going to go to Africa, and, and I doubt, I really, really, really doubt they've got dudes in Africa. I don't know the destroyers. So these, these are going to go straight to the Azores, probably.
Um, there's a there's a I've I've saw the destroyers. I think those five units are the destroyers. So I should be fine. This was the Portuguese capital for a bit. Maybe there's a, there's no there isn't. I was gonna say maybe there's some supply there. Quite a bit of supply. You know what? I don't care with the Soviets now, so I'm just gonna cancel these deals. It's actually gonna help me align towards the Allies faster. The Soviets are gonna hate my guts, but I don't. But these deals are now getting in the way. So the Soviets now hate me. Which makes me align towards the Allies faster. Right now the units outside of Portuguese the Portuguese mainland are starving. Because they don't have a they do not have a I don't know why I brought so many dudes with me actually they don't have a port to supply the overseas territories I'm gonna use one core Go take that VP. Why are they not? Why? Why are they not? Oh, these are melee shippers. These are brigades. Never mind, those are brigades. Eagerly waiting for superior firepower. Don't know why I brought so many dudes to divisions would have would have done it. Gonna wait until midnight for the repair tip. The repair ticks always happen at midnight. They like to work at midnight. They don't work during the day. They're night owls. <sighs> Shit. That's why I took this one to get more supply, but then I forgot to make the supply convoys. Okay, now the headquarters stop. Great. If I had more units, I did, would not need that cheesy tactic, but I don't. You know, more naval units, like four or five of them. It would make it extremely unlike. Oh, for fuck's sake. It would make it make it extremely unlikely that. That the landing crafts would be sunk by four destroyers.
But we just saw of them. It's extremely risky. So, wow, the amount of time this is taking to get there. It's because I fucked up. Now I, I stopped him. Okay, they should be out of supplies by now. October 3rd. So the destroyers all of a sudden stop being as scary. Why? I'm sending the fucking supplies. What the hell is going on? Really? Massive derpy by the supply system. Well, I was not in my planning. <laughs> Shit happens, I suppose. Well, the war is on. It's uh, it's on the way. At this time, I'm probably just gonna wait for this to pop, update these divisions, and then go on. or actually just start carrying the brigades where they're gonna be needed. So that's. Two over there. Eight. Fourteen brigades. Yeah, level one infer. Yeah, I know. I saw. It. In level one infer, it often is better to just walk. But I checked the walking time, and it was still bigger than strategic redeploying. On that specific province. Reason why I'm attacking, um, the reason why I'm at, I am attacking, it's because it's going to give me a massive penalty um, to put the brigade there. Massive penalty, stacking penalty. Therefore, I don't want these suits here ready to attack me when I dump those brigades. I suppose I could turn them into a division. Let's do that. For now. Or... Or not. Um, I need to go kill. I know I need to go take the assorge. So I need dudes from here.
Gonna wait until I get superior, superior firepower for a matter of nine days, which will further increase the security of my landing crafts. They'll repair and the destroyers will be out of supply, therefore I can't shoot. Right. This actually is bad because I needed a third landing craft. Oh well. I and mean, the third landing craft won't take too long to come after I next Portugal, and that's gonna happen. Pretty soonish. There you go. So this is pretty much the end of Portugal. I just need to take the source. They're probably out of organization as we speak. I don't think there's no way they've got organization at this point. At least I really, really doubt it. Not having that third landing craft is really, really hurting. There we go. See, out of supplies. So when they get there, it's going to be the end. Yeah, but this... The micromanagement... I understand what you're saying. It's just... There's ways around it. I'm doing it because this is... I can't afford to do it in the way that doesn't require as much clicking because then I would fail my objective because there's are, there are ways to do what I'm doing without the micro without microing this hard so that's Portugal gone What I'm going to do now is dump a, dump a bunch of dudes in ports, which is the closest port to to um, to Ireland. And then I'm going to go attack Ireland. They don't have any warships, so I don't have to worry about Don't want, don't want to worry about that. Still have dudes in Cab Verde? I do. But if you want, I can see the way that Hearts of Iron 4 uh, does the division, lets us update the division template, it's better than Hearts of Iron 3. If I could select a couple of a couple of things from Hearts of Iron 4, that, that would be one of them. And I'll update the division with a click. I'm not like fundamentalist and say, oh no, no, Hearts of Iron 4, no, sucks balls. Everything in Hearts of Iron 3 is better. But it's pretty close to that. But there are a few things that Hearts of Iron 4 does better, and that's one of them. 
And I wish I had it. Another thing this game could benefit from you for, for example, would be the detached damage for the ships and airplanes. That's another source of um, micromanagement that I don't like, but it is what it is. Damon, thanks for the follow. Uh, you know, Japan might declare war on me. If Japan declares war on me, hello. Hello again, Damon, thanks. If Japan declares war on me, I instantly join the Allies. So even though I could just piss them out right now, they might just decide, oh, I'm gonna go kill Portugal. And then I'll go back to 1936 because I auto joined the Allies. So I'm just gonna keep this war going and deal with Japan when the time comes. They're still pretty far away from me. So I don't think they're gonna be a problem. Not yet, at least. If I'm at war with them, they can't declare war on me. No, they can't. We're already at war. I just can't do the same to Germany. Because if I declare war on Germany, I won't be able to move around. Now, look, see, German U boats. And here I am making another landing craft. Good, good. Now it's time to go back to these and upgrade these units. I think I can afford it. It's just gonna be for a bit of time. I'm gonna just go straight up, straight up attack Quark from here, actually, and hope for the best. The units are on our ports, and um, it's a quick trip from ports to over here. As long as I can drop there before they can, as long as they don't cut me like off, like in the sense of being these units over here, I should be fine. Go get more. And this time I probably can even attack from the sea. Now they've got this 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 um this province to worry with. Maybe they won't, they won't try to come for Lisboa, but if they do it's gonna be too late for them. Pretty sure. I'm just gonna dump some dudes here from the sea, take these as quickly as I can. There's no defenders. There goes Macau, I don't care. The officer cost of infantry make three militia. No, and with, with the amount of leadership that I've got, nothing that... Um, the only thing, the only viable thing is militia, and that's it. No anti-tanks, no artillery, no nothing. Which I just wouldn't be able to handle it. I would have, like... A, a, a massive, a very small army. So, in short, my army would be pathetic. But 
but uh, with militia only, I'm gonna have issues with you know piercing. But it is ways. I'm gonna make an attempt. Did you guys get there? See, they're already joining. And this means they're gonna leave that unguarded. Most likely, or very likely guarded. They're probably already wanting to stage an invasion, but I'm much better now, like, like seriously. These divisions are way more powerful than they were before. Let's see, I attack an infantry division and it's at 89 already. Let's just see. There's no one there, see? That's just that's brilliant. And that's the end of these dudes. So that's good. Really good. I'm aligned towards the allies, so they're not getting as annoyed with me. Nice. This will further increase my... This will further increase my, um, I see. I'm just going to start moving troops elsewhere. I didn't like how Germany declared war on me. Like, this is the big problem. I'm aligning towards the Allies, but maybe I should be aligning towards Germany. <laughs> Swedish nukes, thanks for thank you for the fall. Like I could go conquer these dudes, but actually, but I won't because I'm afraid of being declared by Germany. But that makes me not be able to attack nationally Spain, which is one of the targets that I usually go for. November of 1940. I'm not strong enough to go after the US, so... That, that really just leaves me with South America. If I go over there, Japan will kick my ass. And that's probably where I'm going to go. <clears throat> Given that I was declared upon Germany by Germany. Which is pretty darn rare. And Germany declared war. And because it's usually scripted, the wars that they declare are usually scripted. It's just usually the ones that have free will to declare war, it's usually Japan and the US. You know, due to threat. But it's um, um but Germany did it too in the previous run, which is um surprising. To me at least. So now I'm just gonna go to uh to, to, to South America. What is the distance from Lisboa? It's pretty much, it's almost the same as from Monrovia. It's just, I mean, it's just a, a, a bit of a difference, very small. So I'm going to go for Lisboa.
And why am I choosing Lisboa? I'm choosing Lisboa because there's supply. There that I can be using instead of using the supply on my capital. Therefore, these will eventually get reduced when that gets to 3000. Now I probably should research these. I probably should research these. And that's about it for now. I need to take the five minutes. Uh, Turkey. Turkey has a big as a fleet that would eat my landing crafts for breakfast. I can't go challenge them right now. And Germany is, is frankly scary because they declared war upon on me last time. I don't want to go in, in. I don't want to go near them. Usually, I go for Romania. I go for no everyone that's neutral, including this one. But the Germans declared war on me, and I instantly joined the Allies. And this is supposed to be a neutral run. Until I'm in a position to declare war on Germany, I don't want to be near them. I suppose if I'm not near them, they they won't declare. So I'm just going to go for South America. Uh, but I need a small break. I'll be back in around five minutes. Nine hours of stream. I only took one break. I'll be right back.
Yeah, what Sean what Sean Penn is saying is that I sometimes do nineteen hour streams, so now nine hours is really not a lot. But it's been a while since I did that. I mean, not like a few months ago. I did it since I started working on a. I have a daily job. Uh, it's just insane to do that, and and expect to perform during the week. Because when I was, when I didn't have the day job, no, I was, I could decide when I would sleep, when I would stream, whenever, I, no, I, now I've got a schedule, so I can't fuck up my schedule, otherwise, it's gonna be a nightmare. It's not like RimWorld, when I, I set in my schedule that it's time to sleep and I just go sleep. Nope. It doesn't work like that in real life. Hello, Mad Badger. How is it going? Nice to see you. Well, I think this is good enough. Maybe? Did I just bring everyone except the dudes with... Yep, I'm, 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 I'm a genius. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Except the, I brought everyone except the most important divisions, the ones with the, with with leaders on them in them. And therefore, the most experienced ones. So I'm going to go to South America, I'm going to start by, <clears throat> excuse me, by the, um, by the only countries that are not guaranteed by the US. So that's Cuba. That's these dudes. They don't give me a lot. They, they, they give me basically very little. But there, there'll be like a stepping stone to more um, beefy and juicy targets. <clears throat> In the meantime, I am fast, very fastly aligning towards the Allies. As I get closer. I'm gonna have to declare war on a bunch of people. I am not sufficiently close to the Allies yet. At this at this point, everyone is gonna be equally threatened by what I'm gonna do. But who knows? Maybe this time I'm gonna get declared by even the UK. <laughs> that would be hilarious. I never seen it. I have never seen the UK declare war. That's not scripted. I'm gonna wait. No, I'm not. I'm just gonna go ahead and declare war. There's no one there. Good, good, good. Or, no, there is. Okay, Johnny, thanks for keeping me company and for the chat. It 
was a nice shot. Thanks again, and thanks for the good wishes. And sleep well. Okay, let's go speed five. Okay, I'm gonna prioritize these. It's slowing me down really hard. Let's go fetch more units. Actually, there's a couple of them in Cabo Verde. It's probably faster. Yeah, it's just a tad faster, but not but, but not by much. Yep, indeed, especially because I, I some months I, ba I barely got any money off of streaming. Some months the money that I got was not even sufficient to pay for the internet bill. So. It's funny because, uh, funny in a bad way. Right after I had a I had a quite a, quite a few good months where I never got so much out of streaming inter financially speaking. And that was right before the latest expansion from Rimworld Pop, which completely ruined everything for me completely lost the will to play rimworld and therefore what that means financially <laughs> is that you know instead of having like 40 people watching with some ease which would allow for i mean it's a long story but it's um Twitch recently started giving some incentives for people to stream. And given the amount of viewers that I had, I could get quite a wee bit of an incentive for streaming. You know, that, that would allow me to actually get by with streaming. You know, it's, it's, no, no, it was not, not even minimum wage, but it's not like what I've just described or well, sometimes not even getting enough to pay the internet bill, let alone leave off from it. But once again, uh, the greedy developers just uh, pump out um, expansions without worrying with actually making stuff that's interesting. They develop the easiest thing, which is pay to win. I lost interest in the game completely, not to mention the giant amount of bugs that are piling up. And therefore, the job was really needed. <laughs> it was already needed before, but at the situation, situation like that, where I went back to zero again, I wonder if I can declare And get away with it, maybe. It's it's this has happened to me quite sometimes. The first time this happened to me was with with this game that I'm playing now, Hearts of Iron Three. They abandoned it basically and released really Hearts of Iron Four, which sucked very very hard for me. So 
I started playing Eve Farm. Went from 10 to 1 in terms of viewers, like in terms in, in scale. On YouTube, I have thousands of viewers. But I stopped playing Arsenal 3, I lost basically 90% of the viewers. Then I made the following in U4 over a bunch of years. Then the develop developers fucked up U4 beyond any recognition, as far as I'm concerned. Then I found Rimworld. Now back to zero again. Literally zero. I spent an entire year streaming for four people. <laughs> so. Then the developers of Rimworld fucked up Rimworld. And uh, now I don't have any main game. So I just played all games that I feel like playing. I had high hopes for Dwarf Fortress. But it just sucks balls. Like the dude has no clue with regard to making a UI, and it's infuriating to play it. So and I have no main game. <laughs> just... Hey, trash. See us. Thanks for the follow. Do you remember the U4 days? Nice. Thanks for the follow. It really helps. So, in short, the long story short, I was really needing that job. Hello, Doc. Yeah. So, you know, everything that I'm saying is true. <laughs> yeah, but I love this game, but I played it to death, so... That... And they abandoned it, so I had to play something else. Eventually. Now I'm exploring the only things that I didn't do back then, which was like countries like Liberia and even Cuba. Really? Already? Where is this? Pretty close. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, this is one of the. This is what I don't like in Hearthstone Three. That it's just if I don't have the automation in place, it's quite a wee bit of work. I suppose I have to go kill that. Eventually. Look at the IC, 25 already. So that's pretty nice. Let's go get more dudes. This time we should. So, I was research actually. Industrial efficiency is coming along. I probably should explore these. Being able to switch off to old stuff versus new without having to worry as much about view count to it can help enjoyment too. Oh, by all, by in, indeed. So, but like, the only reason I was able to do the things, it was like some very generous people that 
like um, once in a while donated. That really helped. It, I had unfortunately like several people, a lot of people that actually helped me a lot. I will never forget them. And that's the thing with streaming. We get attached to people and then all and then and I know it at least it affects me. You know, I get I I know people, people that uh, sometimes help me and then they don't show up for some time and I was like, what happened to them? Are they okay? <laughs> and so on. I mean, it's not because they've helped me. It's just I know those people better, you know. Then they don't show. They, they... But I'm digressing. Then I'll, I'll be like, I hope they're okay. Don't see them for a long time, and it's not because I want them to help me again. It's just because I I see them as my friends. Like, and then I, where are they? What happened to them? Then I I call, and I mean I I I talk through the to, to, to street, uh, you know twitch chat and get no reply and I'm like I hope they're okay April of 29th, April 29th. Okay, let's go for Cuba. Every time I declare war, these lose neutrality. I'm getting closer and closer to the allies. The closer I am, the less these are worry with every time I declare war. But right now, they probably still worry. Cuba is not... Cuba is a target that actually will give me... A... I see, I think. Yep. So I'm going to go for Cuba. It's... Not very easy to conquer, if I recall correctly, they're not very easy to conquer, depending on the laws. So I don't, I'm just going to dump them over there and go get more. I don't think they're easy to conquer there. They have a lot of infantry, usually. But um, they're at a very uh, low reinforcement. I mean, they're like a voluntary army, maybe even. So I probably should have attacked from the sea. But with all the threat going like. I've been raising threat, Germany declaring war, Japan declaring war. It's 1940, December. I thought they would be with better laws. So this was actually easy. It's not done yet. But... Pretty sure it's. I mean, it's not what I was expecting. Their capital is now over there. There's probably no one there now because I've attacked their farmer capital. They're strategically deploying to the front. And I just do this. And that's it for Cuba. You guys, hurry up. 
the IC is probably gonna go up by one with a bit of luck when it repairs. Maybe it won't even go up. Because I don't take the full IC. It's just a, a tiny fraction. Like at 50% maybe. At best. Because this is not one of my cores. Well, I'm conquering stuff. Is it the European? Is the European war started? Yeah, a lot, quite a long time ago. It actually started earlier than usual because Czechoslovakia denied to be annexed. So all hell break broke loose in I don't know um, May or sooner. Probably February. Actually, it should have been February of thirty nine. With the war between Germany and Czechoslovakia and uh, all the allies. So the US was at 57 neutrality, still at 57. That's going to change pretty soon. I'm running out of targets. The next one, I have to declare war on the US. I could pro be progressing faster if it was for the fact that Germany declared war on me on the previous run, and now I'm very afraid they will declare war again. So I'm leaving Europe when I could have gone after Romania and definitely could have gone after these smaller countries and nationally Spain eventually. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it looks like I won't need any more troops over there. So I'm just going to move troops from wherever they are back in order to bring them wow there's still dudes in Ireland yeah this has been really harsh but I'm gonna start spamming them very soon I'm already kind of spamming them There's no denying that this is slowing me down. Okay, see, so dropped to 
It's 41. Do I have more dudes? No. How about generals? I do. I'm gonna dump these suits over here. Close to... to Mexico because I'm probably gonna start by killing Mexico unless they've joined the Allies I don't think they have don't think they have joined them Twelve divisions. I've got twelve, I've got twenty. But they're all over the place. There we go. Um, the ice increased by one. Cool. Kind of need I see now. You remember when I said this was useless at at the time, because. 2.5% of 5 was nearly 0. So, as the IC goes up... And it's going up. That stops being the case. And I absolutely need IC to make things... faster. If I was gonna do this again, I would make sure I would have at least three landing crafts. But it's difficult to get it right. I would probably have it if I had research industrial efficiency. That was a big mistake. Oh well, I thought I could have three. Only ended up with two, and I'm paying really really hard for that mistake before i go mess with mexico i'm gonna go get everyone and their mothers and bring them to cuba this should be the last ones yep Hmm. I don't have anyone to defend Liberia, though. What's the distance between this part? Oh, shoot. They can actually invade me. Hey, wait. They can actually invade me. I'm gonna go to war with everyone and their mothers, you know, including Brazil. 
Um, which means I should be making divisions. Gonna declare war on the entirety of the of the. I'm gonna declare war on everyone. Like all of these suits, I'm gonna be at war with him. I'm gonna be at war with these suits. I'm gonna be at war with that dude. I'm gonna be at war with the U.S. But with the U.S., it's just gonna be for an hour or so. I'm not strong enough to go take them out with twenty divisions. It's just. Can't do it. At least I don't know how. <laughs> uh, actually, you stay here. I'm hoping two 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 divisions are sufficient to hold that. But Brazil has Marines, so I'm playing with fire there. It would be hilarious to be annexed by Brazil. Yeah, and what makes militia be so great it are two things. It's these militia combat which reduce it's half of the infantry when you get these. And then and especially the officers. We can get one brigade. We can get the same firepower, amount of firepower as infantry for half the officers. So up to date infantry versus up to date militia. We can get the same amount of fire. It's a two to one thing. To get the same firepower, we need two militia. So for the same firepower, I get uh, um, I need um, 20 officers instead of 100, so 5 times less officers. I hope the Mexico doesn't have any good sh ships. Because, because I only have two landing crafts if they actually have a navy. I don't recall if they have a navy. Oh boy. So, I have to declare war on the US. Usually they want to be out straight away. I hope that's still the case. Because if it's not, I'm. this is, this is the end of the run. Okay, they want to be out. Good. Then I just declare war on everyone. They are they are they are separate wars. And go from there. It's a way to bypass the the guarantee by the US. I suppose I could leave uh, South America for last and not declare right now. The issue is that I'm going to get a truce to the US. If I go through this quickly, then I'm, I'm going to add, I won't be able to declare on anyone. This will probably make some of these guys join the allies, and that would suck. Or the axes. But this is the only place where I can expand right now.
Did I miss anyone? Where's the diplomatic? No, diplomatic map mode. Nope, I'm really at war with the entire American continent, with the exception of Canada. No, I just piss out the US. And there you are, bypassing the, the guarantee. But I'm still at war with everyone else, so... Let's go kill Mexico. Why start by Mexico? It's because they join the Allies. They can join the Allies, and then they actually have some IC, and they're not very difficult to kill. Provided that my landing crafts don't get wrecked. Yeah, that's why some things are possible, like Liberia. It, it is what it is. Did the US actually back then would intervene in a war if someone attacked Uruguay, for example? Would they? Maybe they would. I'm not sure. I don't think they even had an army, basically. They just had a navy. The army was really small. Because after World War One, they were isolationists, like... I mean, in non-intervention. Um, I just want to dump them over there. But it takes a long time to go from here to over here, from there to over here. Whatever, let's just dump them. Let's just dump them over there. The issue is that these dudes could be... if they're easy to kill. So I'm torn... between... So I'm just gonna do these instead. They're not easy to kill. I just fucked up. And I've got my ship tied up. And leave and then I will just um deliver three per three parts of the payload. I decided to gamble and I lost. That's pretty much it. You stop it. Let's go get more people. Let's go for it. Thirty IC, not bad. Some IC repaired. Not bad. You just stay there. Actually. This was stupid. Ah, sometimes I'm such an idiot. Like, I should have allowed them to keep going in order because some little pops there, they're gonna have attack delay. And they won't be able to help. No, no, before this dude land, some dude might strategically deploy over there and then I'll be in trouble. <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. Okay, that didn't happen. Good. Ok, 
Got a bunch of clicking to do. <clears throat> wow, that's quite a wee bit of convoys. Let's go get more dudes. Uh, actually, let's just go all of you go. Good thing I'm I'm making more. I only have eleven. That's pretty bad. I need another port just in case. I really need to annex Mexico before they join the Allies. Because they have quite a wee bit of IC. That I could use. You go there. <clears throat> this is just to establish a bridge bridgehead to the to that. And then I'm going to go straight to the capital, but I need to garrison these. No sign of warships. Which is a really good thing. Am I not loading any? I am. So it is just stick around. Let's go get more. While you dudes go to that VP. Another convoy. No need. That's a level 10 port and I don't have that many divisions. Support the attack. Should start seeing Brazil invading somewhere. I just hope it's not my capital. I'm saying Brazil, but it could be like Peru and or even Chile. It's fine as long as my landing crafts don't get wrecked. Because if they do get wrecked, this GG. I suppose you probably should keep moving. And that's why I say that Mexico is easy to conquer. 
conquer them a lot of times because no, it's easy to conquer them from the sea, like just very, very, very easy. It's really dangerous to go to this side. Even Japan can hit me over here. But they're not at war with the US, so they don't so they can't hit me. So with that in mind, let's go over there just in case. Should we? One, three, four, that makes five. I don't need it. I don't need it. that's about it. I've deployed all my troops. Now it's just a question of waiting. It seems to me that I made a mistake though. Oh, that's not Garrison. Speed 5, nothing's going on. Really want to do these, let's hope that's just headquarters. Um, you know, go over there. I just need their capital, and now that's gonna be it. It's just a question of getting there. This is mountains, these are mountains. That's a good thing with militia. Because they're generally speaking, they've got bonuses in mountains.
need more dudes to attack the capital. I'm seeing just one brigade there. But in just case there's more that I'm not seeing. Let's see infantry. Now we can attack. Right, this is 41. Should have been researching means. So that's it for Mexico. Let's hope they don't join the Allies in the meantime. Just another eight hours. The IC should increase quite a wee bit, hopefully. Everyone strategically deploys to the nearest port. There we go, 36. Good. March of 41. I'm not developing fast enough. The US will soon be in the Allies. They hate me the most. Obviously. If I had waited for this moment to declare all those wars, they wouldn't even care. But I didn't wait. No, because now I'm really close to the Allies. I didn't wait, so how could I wait? So I am their biggest threat. Actually... This was silly. This was pretty silly. And the game just out up for no reason. I'm gonna have to out tab it again. I should have strategically deployed everyone to the to the west coast, not the east coast. Because that's where the capitals are. <clears throat> so it would be faster for the landing crafts to go get them. If I have more landing crafts, th that mistake would not be as apparent. But I don't have, I only have two. Wait, this is probably the game is running. No, it's paused. Okay, let's go. This was a mistake. Let's um let's pick four dudes and then strategically redeploy everyone over there.
waiting for another dude for the attack delay to be over. Okay, this is good, it'll do. I just hope I don't get intercepted by the Navy Peruvian, Peru, Peruvian or, 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 you know, the Peru, Peruvian Navy or the Navy from Chile. It should be pretty straightforward. There's probably no one over there, and bam, this is gonna next instantly. Then I just go get get more dudes on that part. And keep going from there. In the meantime, I will get more landing craft and more divisions. <clears throat> so while I'm busy taking these dudes out, damn, there's there was actually one guy over there. Stop. There's just eleven hours delay. Attack delay. It's fine. It's are all still strategically redeploying. <laughs> yeah. How dare they? How do they dare to be guarding their own capital? Now the thing is supplies. These dudes can't win. They, they, they possibly can't possibly win. There we go. They give up. Cancel this convoy. No longer needed. About thousands of supply right there. 37 I see. So that's this is the next. So that means no underground resistance. See, they had made the right call. These dudes would already be here. And I would not have to waste a few hours. And they would be ready to attack. Instead, they'll have a duck delay. That's just gonna happen with these ones. The one, the next ones will be fine. They've been there for a while now. Okay, not all of them.
I'm gonna risk doing that. These are mountains, but I'm confident that my troops are better. <laughs> they're militia, but they're probably better. Just have to wait for the boats. So one to increase the combat width. Then I dump these ones. I can even dump another one. They're better because look at the some of the experience. Some of them I have already quite a wee bit of experience. Keep going. This one's probably going to be tough. I'm surprised no one tried to amphibious invade me yet. Probably should go after this one first instead of this one. <clears throat> this is across a river into a mountain. That's usually a bad move. Just saying. I'm just gonna dump these guys over there. I wish. That's Garrison. I guess we're going to attack across the river into a mountain. Why not? It takes forever to get over there. 11 days. So 15, 2.55, 10. You dudes attack. I can't yet. So this is ten. No, this is 12.5, this is 15. Fifteen. And this will allow for the fifteen and plus one. Looks like that's going to take a while, so if that's the case, I'm going to have to do these after all. Maybe. That's what it looks like, though. Oh, that's just great. It's going to be really wrong. My troops are probably better, <laughs> but look at those at those penalties. They're gonna get the org. 
I have like multiple times combat to it. But my efficiency is multiple times worse too. Um, I don't know. Looks like we're winning. Looks like we're winning. It's gonna be costly, but it looks like we're winning. Yeah, it looks like we're winning. But, uh, then over there we're winning. This time they're actually moving still. I tried to go for Nicaragua. Over here I'm gonna expect the same thing. A bunch of dudes, but it's planes. Another landing craft is about to be deployed. Undeniably, this is taking its sweet time. But I think it's also undeniable that we're gonna win, aren't we? Now I've got a sucking penalty. It was a brief one though. Was lucky the dude reinforced instantly. Imagine that was the Chilean Navy. Like the actual battleships. I think they've got battleships or at least cruisers. Well, looks like we're gonna win. It's a Pyrrhic victory, but we're gonna win. Well, that's the end of the contest. No longer attacking across the river. I mean, this is our... If I had more landing crafts, this would be faster, but I don't have them, so because of the attacking penalty, the amphibious penalty, would be much, much, much smaller. Finally, that only took forever. No biggie. It only took forever. <laughs> and the troops are completely deorganized. You did stick around.
it only took forever. Actually go back. Uh, someone with the tuck. Uh, offensive trade. This guy will do. Right. Um, let's go pick up these suits. This is planes. No river between us and them. Infrastructure over there is not awful. Just change my mind, go there. get more troops let's try our luck there we go It seems should just chill. That's another win. I, sh I should I should I could use more troops but I'm at the same time really scary of the really scared about Brazil so I'm taking the very scenic route and bringing just one division leaving three to garrison my capital I need more troops. This one cut it. Man, having a third landing craft is going to be great. The army is deorganized, so just giving them some time to breathe. Or not.
Let's hope they don't get wrecked. I'm really surprised why Brazil is not launching any amphibious invasions, to be honest. They've got a large navy and a large army. I'm not sure what's up with that. What am I going to do with you? Everyone goes over there, I suppose. Less work for me. Much less efficient, but definitely much less work for me. And from here, I'll, I'll attack these lizards. They should be invading by now. So if I was not this tired, I would have dumped some dudes there already. the best that I can do. I'm really scared that I'm going to run into the Navy from, from Peru and or Shield and, and lose my landing crafts, which, which would be a really, 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 really giant setback. So you're not taking this province. I suppose I'm attacking right now. Oh shoot, there's a lot of dudes. Nope. So that's 10. I can... That's 10. 10 combat suite. I need another three. So that's one. I guess we have to wait. Welcome back, Mad Badger. It is what it is, like I have to wait. The, the troops are all deorganized. So that's four, ten, I need another three or so. One, two, I have to get used to militia. The numbers for militia, I'm not used to them. To be honest, you probably can't find, I was gonna say a single playthrough on YouTube where I used militia, but that's probably, 
exaggerating. But at this level, at this scale, nah, this is the first time, so no wonder I'm, I'm not used to it. And I played this for thousands of hours. Yeah, they're done. When you conquer a country and there is an adjacent country also at war with you, do they get some troops? No. From the defeated country, no. If that's what you want to know, the answer is no. I'm just grateful this is not their main fleet. I've, I've used the headquarters to attack for the dude to gain even more experience. I don't think I got a single IC from these. Just I conquered Mexico and that's it for the IC. Unless I'm missing something. That should be accurate. <laughs> exactly. As a funny but really accurate way of putting it. Oh boy, I need more. Where the hell did my, go, my AC go? Yeah, I know where it went. That's where it went. Like the units that I'm making, I'm costing me more IC. Now I should be making the landing crafts and the divisions, but I can't train any officers. I can't recruit any officers. This is what happens when you don't have leaders. This becomes quite tedious, actually. I could choose to not use leaders for the attacks. But I would be pretty stupid. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, and six. Let's bring these to the long two. Six. Wait, I can bring another one, but then the the, st the stacking penalty. No, I cannot bring anyone else. I'm hoping I can actually do a direct attack on these and win. It's planes. I've got a third landing craft, and I've got a lot of units, and these will be safer on this side than on this side. Let's go! Looks like what I said it's actually going to happen. In the meantime, let's attack that dude too. Stacking penalty of 15%. Thank God it's the sub.
Well, reinforcements are arriving from this side, so it's just a question of time. What time is this? Man, time flies. The allies are my friends now. Uh, does the US still fear me? Of course they do. <laughs> but in real life, the this sub would be really, really scary too. They're but luckily, this is not real life. Like, just a torpedo and bam, just sinks the dude. Sinks the ship. But that's not how it, now, that's not how it works in Hearts of Iron 3. So that's, for, that's it for Central America. Now you have to work on, uh, you know, start working on these guys. It's going to be a slow and tedious process. It's going to end up with, hopefully, the entirety of South America annexed. I need to start pumping out some brigades for anti-partisan duty. These suits need a breather. All these fighting in just 34 I see. Seven thousand crude oil dog. <laughs> Uh, where am I going to start? That's the question. I suppose I'm going to go after Venezuela, Colombia. I suppose that's, that's it. Oh, that's shitty. And the Brazil will go straight to the Allies soon. That's really shitty. Then there's no more goals for Argentina. What that means is underground resistance. That's really bad. What did I expect? This is taking forever. I 
it would be nice if I could have conquered them. Before they join the faction. It makes their territory be almost useless to me. And opens the door to underground resistance. Oh well. Um, I brought too many people. He did. I suppose across the river is less worse than the less bad. Then the fever is a sun. Just spinning the dude down. Oh, this is actually have a destroyer, right? Forgot about it. Please don't kill my landing craft. I kind of like it. Please don't kill my landing craft. I mean, it's just one destroyer, but still. Please don't kill my landing craft. Thank you. Could you please reinforce? I don't even have, like, ministers to help me out. Most countries have some ministers that I can just tweak to get combat reinforcement chance or get a bit more of leadership or get a bit more of whatever. These dudes is just this crap. Oh, hello, sub. Hello, destroyer. Oh my god, this is getting bad. I'm gonna have to leave soon. This is this is an, this is not sustainable. Like really? Come on. Don't you guys have anything better to do? Okay, I took the port. That was scary. <laughs> that was pretty scary. If I had lost a landing craft, I might still lose it. That's a shitty port if I recall correctly. Yep. Let's give it a day for recovery. I mean, to reinforce a bit, just one day.
because this port is shitty i need to capture this one on the double so these dudes are gonna do that i'm gonna take every opportunity to repair this i'm gonna wait to midnight or midnight a tick of repair For repairing, gonna go get those dudes. Are we moving over here? No, so let's just change that. Oh boy, there's so many dudes. I'm not that powerful yet. What could possibly go wrong? How about you go over there? What could possibly go wrong? Too many dudes. You go repair. Have I forgotten any units? I did. <laughs> there are planes. Okay, then. You support over there. You go across the river into a mountain. It's hills. Wait for another tick of reinforcement. There's a lot of a lot of stuff going on now, and let's go. Hopefully, um, with un uneventfully, go get those divisions. Let's just update the efficiency. At least it was only this <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. Uh, more and stronger dudes will pop. That's what you mean. I'm gonna run out of supplies in a minute. If I don't get these. Come on. I saw the stupid sub again. I, that's what it looks like.
Okay, we took a, a decent part. So now I have to actually That should be straightforward, pretty straightforward. Let's gain more experience. I have to be patient, like this can't be taken in like a week. A lot of um, really bad terrain. This is our cutoff. We have 90 supplies, so that's sufficient for quite some time. Just gonna get a repair tick. And then I'm gonna proceed to take out, hopefully, Venezuela, take them out. I'm not expecting anyone to be at their capitals, so I'm just gonna use one one division. That's I bet I'm willing to bet that's a net quarter only. Yep, so that's the end of Venezuela. Why is this being so hard? You go shield over there. Or, or no, <laughs> I'm afraid of uh, an invasion by Brazil. I'm wondering what they are doing. So let's go over there instead. Why do we always leave the port in the middle of the night? Well, they are putting the land craft back together with that. <laughs> exactly. Pretty much what's going on. Wow, that, that's quite the battle there. Okay, that battle is, is one. It's just a question of time. So I'm just going to go around him. Uh, you stay there to garrison the port. You go over there to garrison that port and we'll take care of them with these ones. Like, there's no way they can win these. I'm putting another dude there for the for the division to gain experience.
it's safe to say that these landing crafts um, won't be needed for a bit. I'm about to to get a few more divisions. Let's go get him. How's the situation? I'm on top, on top of the Allies. So the US couldn't care less now with what I do. Let's add another one, why not? But Germany is taking my guts. <clears throat> and probably the number one threat for both Germany and the Soviets. Well, for the Soviets, it's still Germany. Yep, let's go to speed 5. There's nothing going on. I mean, there is, but it's very slow. Just wanted to conquer that. Now I'm gonna go like this and uh, provide another axis of attack to their capital. Just in case everyone and their mother is at the capital. And that will be the end of of Colombia. What's this? It's fine. I think this is fine. Why is it fine? It's fine because I'm pinning them down. And then I'll flank them through here if the suits actually get there. I might even win. Again, I'm dreadfully afraid of the of Brazil attacking me from the sea. I don't know why they haven't done it yet. I, I would I could use winning against these suits, that's for sure. But um that <laughs> doesn't seem like it's gonna happen. So I suppose you should stop.
awesome. Another landing craft. I had forgotten how slow this is, like going through there, from there to over here. Oh, for fuck's sake. not what I wanted to do. They're surrounded now. Support the attack. You go in. Actually, just stop it. If we, attack, if we stop the attack early, it's just a few hours of the attack delay. Right, this is the cross river, this isn't. So. Suppose you guys join and you support. Good luck stopping me now. Even though I should be going for the capital. I got all these dudes here being blocked. I didn't see there was just one division there. I really wanted to dislodge them. And so I did. A bit lucky with the rebels. Not many rebels have fought. There's just Portugal over there. I think that's the only one so far. Okay, while we wait, <laughs> let's just go around and, and dump some brigades. This one's a uh, wrong one. Let's 
So I'm going to dump one brigade in Lisboa. One brigade in Ireland. And probably one brigade over there, another one over there. Go. Fastest way to get rid of Peru is, is by is through the sea. But then they actually have a navy. Then I just might lose my entire navy, which is not very big. The issue with dumping a brigade over here is it's that I need to run a convoy to supply it. And another convoy means they select the wrong one. I select the wrong one. That's... Means another convoy opened to attack. This is my supply center. This this play these supports are my supply center. Therefore, I am leaving some troops behind to to garrison them. This is pro probably where I'm gonna stage the invasion of the rest of South America. Because I'm dreadfully afraid of the of their navies. So Colombia is about to get an X. The issue is that I'm going to waste a long, long time going like this. A long, long time. Hey, look. They're finally doing something. That's quite encouraging. If their navy is over there. Maybe I can just go in there and sneak in. And take their VPs. But this is what my navy is doing right now. So I'm probably just going to try to sneak in by sea and take their capital and hope for the best. Like if they're, they're dumping troops in Central America, that's a really good sign.
That should be the one. Take forever to move through these mountains. Okay, now we have to actually keep a front. Where if I just go sneak in and attack from the sea. I can conquer them really fast and, and speed this up. On one hand. On the other hand, I, I might just get murdered. And lose my all my landing crafts along with the divisions. So that would not be ideal. I'm gonna automate these in a minute. This rebel whack-a-mole can be fully automated. There we go, that's the end for it. For Colombia. These were the brigades that I was supposed to deploy for Rebel whack a -Mole. I'm gonna risk it. See, their troops are over here taking taking stuff which means there's a high likelihood that there's no one over here See, <laughs> that's what they're doing. That's cool. Keep doing it. I don't mind. Man, I need landing crafts. Uh, let's take the scenic route. I'm dreadfully, like I said one million times by now, I'm pretty sure. I'm dreadfully afraid of the Brazilian Navy. why I don't like garrison stuff because of the convoys but uh, otherwise my life is going to be miserable if I don't do it 
So I'm gonna create a theater headquarter to deal with the rebels. Be right there, who cares? I'm gonna give it to the guy. If you are, which means fuck you rebels, just in case you're wondering, so I can't give it any transports or else it's gonna fuck up. And the Dutch, the these brigades to the fuck you rebels headquarters. And automated. We'll take care of the rebels. <laughs> yeah, my life. It's risky. Very much so. Please don't run into the Brazilians. Oh look, 45 I see. Between the dudes over here and the dudes in Central America, there's a high chance, like I said, that this is empty. So I just need 24 hours to dump the troops. And run. Let's just um, bring just five. Take the scenic crowd. Can I? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna, but they're they're gonna run out of supplies there. There's just oh there they oh my look that's their fleet. Please don't engage, thanks, thanks, thanks. So we can go over there unless I get attacked by chill. This should be easy peasy. That that was their navy. That was their navy. I'm really hoping there's no one over there. There is. It's fine. Let's just dump them over there. And get the hell out of here. I should be able to get there first. Get there first. Let's take the scenic route again. It's just safer. I do need to come here and support these zoots because... They might run out of supplies. While these zoots are having fun attacking. They're losing organization. Then I'll come back and snipe the capital.
<laughs> they do. They do. This is our, these are highly experienced landing crafts. Their navy went there to dump more troops to go conquer Mexico. They actually took the same path that I took. So that's not bad. Oh shit. I should be attacking. Idiot. Oh, I was so stupid. I got distracted reading the chat. They're running out of supplies and I'm just chilling. They should have been attacking the whole time. Instead, they're just chilling in the mountains. So now it won't be as easy as I wanted. I can't risk losing a land craft. Having the troops here gives me a, a, like an advance warning about their navy. At least the one from Peru. But they can't just pop here at any moment, to be honest. At least I know they're not here. I'm gonna risk it. Famous last words. Please reinforce. Please reinforce. They've reinforced one at least, right? No, they haven't. Come on, reinforce, damn it. They did. There you go. It took your capital. Just gonna dump these suits and go get more. Or I can wait. No, I'm gonna go get more. Taking the scenic crowd yet again. Yeah, it should be passive always for transports. See what the automated headquarters is still doing. Okay, that's great. That's even more firepower due to true less true less um attacking penalty. Liberia is actually doing stuff. Even though it started with 2 IC and 100% neutrality. Just in case I lose a landing craft, I'm not bringing them all.
I'm gonna sink everything. <laughs> Badass transport ships. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take the chance and I'm gonna go. There, there, there. But this is territorial waters from Shield. So maybe I should go there instead. I'm at war with Shield too. Look at all this infantry. And the, no, these ones. And the dudes on my border. And the dudes in Central America. This is not Germany, so there's no one over there. I mean, I guess this is a border with another country. Maybe there's one guy there. Maybe. Yeah, as expected, there's no one. And that's the end of these suits. Um, against these guys, probably asking for trouble really, really hard, so I'm gonna just start moving. By land. Why is it asking for trouble? It's... Actually, let's just redo these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Why? Because these dudes have a much stronger navy. They have battleships, if memory serves. Old ones, but they do have battleships. While the other guys that I just conquered just set cruisers. Yep, exactly. They're just going, they went on a wild goose chase. They have no strategy understanding. Um, I need rebel, I need anti rebel. I need uh, brigades over there, like a couple of. Militia, but I like the transports. I'm still carrying. I'm still carrying troops over here. It's likely that I'm going to have issues with supply. I'm being supplied. My supply center is very, very far away. Just gonna go straight to Panama. I mean, not Panama, uh, Paraguay. I have to go fuck up Argentina too. I just don't have enough units yet. So much stuff to do, so, little, so few means and so little time to do it. I'm working on it. Then there's another thing that I haven't mentioned. It's that militia is so... It's slow moving by comparison with infantry. If I had a strong fleet, I would conquer this in a heartbeat, but I don't.
Look, 53, 54 I see. We're flying 7,000 bucks in the bank. Just keep making divisions. Destroyers. Now we're big buddies with the United Kingdom. They had time to improve their destroyer. Oh, what? Why is it impossible? Oh, they're still embargoed? Yeah. And they hate my guts. I completely forgot about it. But I've got these dudes. They don't like me much because of the high threat. But they're still willing to sell. Look at that. They don't even have they don't even want a lot of money. This is bugged out. No. Nope. That's a lot of destroyers. I have to go after the, the I have to kill the US too. I have to kill the, the British. I have to go kill Japan. So maybe this is not a lot of destroyers. Let's do a couple of them. There, yeah, there's an infantry type that's faster. It's the mountain. Uh, the special forces are, are faster. But not by a lot, but they are faster. Like almost 50% in certain circumstances. But in planes, it's like 33% faster. That's all my dudes. Let's go get more. If I went to minimal training, that would be better to build stuff faster but then these dudes would lose a shit ton of experience and i don't have a lot of units i need way more than these <laughs> you 
you know, if I want to go kill Japan, if I want to go kill the the British. If I want to go kill Brazil by land, I need way more units than that. And it's midnight, so I need to shut up because of my neighbors who need to sleep. I probably should stop playing, but I feel like playing. It's my day off after all, and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. So I'm going to play for a wee bit longer, but the microphone has to be muted. Otherwise... You know, my neighbors are going to be pissed at me. I'm still going to keep playing, unless you're leaving. It's just that I have to mute the microphone. If that's the case, if you're leaving, it was nice talking to you too.
Flaw Marcos Roll Coffee Time.